Right. But then I noticed that Gloria was in the wrong place there. We're live. Hello. Welcome to the Bowie Protestant YouTube channel. Oh my god. <laughs> I <laughs> I am Fire James. <laughs> and this is the future husband of My Wish I Wish, whose name is Stefan. You see, back when Stefan was uh, broke into her house, she told him she would marry him when pigs would fly. And so Stefan is actually a really good pork meat flyer. He makes really good breaded pork. So now he knows that pigs can fly, so he can marry my wish I wish. So how are you doing today, Stefan? Well, if we're going to go that route, <laughs> I would... Uh, uh, I would like I'm hearing the echo now, just to let you know. You are? That's not good because my headphones. Oh, are is right. that me? Oh, that is me. Oh, I was wow. Say, I'm doing I did it. I inconvenienced uh, I it my, myself just there. for you. No, I actually am using two computers right now. That's what it was. Uh, I, I see. That. All right. I see. <laughs> I see. I see. I see. I see. Uh, so, uh, how are you doing, Stefan? Uh, I'm hanging in there. Um, I am. Are you playing your? Are you playing a cell phone game? Or are you? No, I I had something to read to you. Now I can't find oh, okay. it. Maybe I'm not supposed oh. to. Hold Was on. it in reaction to my uh, my mind? Yeah, oh Cyrus? yeah, a hundred percent. It a hundred percent. Inside jokes are the best. Inside jokes are the best. I was like hoping you wouldn't even go there, but now <laughs> did. Okay. Did ready. We got one word out. Did hey hey everyone. I need a simple favor if you are so inclined. Find James Gad on here. Send him a message that yeah. simply says unblock Shane. If he responds, send the Wait, same what? message again. <laughs> unblock Shane. Uh, uh, unblock Shane. No. I was gonna wait until I'm not the going end to unblock Shane. That out. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably gonna be watching this. So I will oh. unblock Shane when Shane apologizes and, and personally apologizes to me. Not not like just, you know, apologize through mediaries and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. personally apologizes to me. Ooh. Are you there? Me? I, okay. I'm here, yeah. It keeps blinking in and out. Like I told you, the Wi-Fi. I don't know. There's like a Wi-Fi demon who follows me. Um, so at my apartment here, uh, the Wi-Fi is just bad. It's there's no excuse for it. It's bad. And you can't connect to it like through an Ethernet cable. It's just sort of there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but at the church where I'm, I'm taking over, uh, the Wi-Fi there is bad too. <laughs> and it's like I, it doesn't matter what computer I use. It doesn't matter what – I have two computers. Uh, I have a cell phone. It doesn't matter what computer or cell phone I use. It's just bad wherever I go. I don't know. It wow. follows me. Anyway. Oof. Yeah. So um, do you still have that su uh, Super Docs, uh, Stefan? Uh, page and stuff like that you know i don't uh, i meant to announce it to people on facebook but i forgot um but uh no the the super doc stuff on those facebook is no more because honestly if you're just friends with me on facebook and or real life uh yeah. you you don't need it like I, yeah. I was told by one of my classmates in seminary that i i, I was like a walking living meme so you are, I can just put those and I, I have all the memes saved on my computer. I, I haven't reloaded them onto my own page yet, but yeah, it just, I allowed it to be made 10 years ago because a friend of mine in California really wanted to make that page. And I, I honestly thought it was yeah. a nice contrast to like the negativity from things like Hyperdox, Herman and those sorts of Is things. That one still he admitted he like stopped being Orthodox and stopped so uh, i i'm still a priest within the anglican tradition by the way yes um uh, someone is asking but anyway yeah. yeah 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 i i i i can see the chat um no. so uh yeah i thought it was a nice like just like like more of a positive vibe but it just kind of got redundant and then he and i like the the guy um who made it um he and I are still in touch, but we haven't seen each other in real life in uh, like, mm. you know, close to nine years. So it's like, I was the only one yeah. making the newer memes. Cause I'm the only one that's like around myself, you know? 
So yeah. it just kind of got redundant. And then I didn't have as much time to like load stuff up. So no, there is no more super doc stuff on those page. I allow people to call me that mm. if they wish, but um, I don't know, like mm. once I got a clerical rank, you know, almost two, two years ago when I was actually uh, made a reader, mm. I just started to like, mm. you know, use that title more. Take life more so, seriously. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking seriously, uh, but you know, <laughs> uh, I, I don't yeah. take, um, look, I don't take myself very seriously, but I take what I do very seriously. Yeah. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. Well, aim into that. So. Yeah. Aim into that. All right. So how do we know each other? How, um, tell me how we know each other. Tell, tell the audience how we know each other. So it's funny. Cause I, I was telling everyone that you were a friend of mine from college. And then I, I was thinking, did you actually go to that college? Did you yes, go to I did. Oh, okay. Okay. I, yes. I can remember. Yeah. Okay. So we, we had you... classes together. We literally had classes together. I was going to say, I don't think we did have classes together. Father Palmer, Father Palmer. You were in that class with me? We took Jesus of Nazareth with Father Palmer. Yes, I was. In, I literally sat next to you. No. -uh. That is how I became Anglican. You're, you're that is how I became Anglican. Me. Yes. Whoa. I'm not gaslighting you. I'm so Dude. sorry. In Dude. my old age, because I'm 34 <laughs> now, I'm forgetting things. Wow. That's, uh, uh, that's embarrassing. I, I remember other people from that class. I don't know how I forget you. Um, okay. Literally, don't you remember the time that uh, you and I were goofing off in like the front row? And like you and I kept just talking to each other, and then Father Palmer got really mad at us and just like talked like like I I don't know if he slammed his fists on the table, but he was just sort of like stop talking, and then he apologized to us like right after. You don't remember that? No, but now I'm having vague memories of you talking to other people that I remember from that class in a different setting. But maybe we all okay, yeah, because we changed <laughs> rooms a few times in that class too. I think so. No, no, I don't think that one. Um, you might be thinking of the question of God one, um, which oh. I visited with you. Oh, when, okay. When you or whatever. Wait, was Chris yeah. Peterson in that c class with, with you? Yes. Yeah. 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 Cause I remember him in my class. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. So yes, we were both students at middle Tennessee. State and we, we won't say his name, but the, uh, the, uh, the gay atheist Jew was there too. Remember him? Yeah, he deleted me on Facebook years ago. He, oh, he blocked me on Facebook also, yeah. Oh, so maybe we anyway. should send him a message that says unblock James. Um, <laughs> I don't care. I don't want to right. block him. So Stefan, Emil, Johansson met Adam, James, Godomsky. Uh, what was it? Fall of 2011, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I had – I was unaffiliated – I had come from a mostly Roman Catholic background. You had come from an independent fundamental Baptist background, right? The IFBs. And yeah. I had, because of a guy I had a class You were a non-Trinitarian. You were an Aryan. Yeah, I guess if you want to label it. Um, and I had, I hadn't been to an actual church service in quite a long time. But then um, I had uh, had a classmate in in college who is now a priest in the Ethiopian church, uh, Father Beza, and he started getting me more interested in like you know that world of the the Eastern and the Oriental Orthodox, and then through mm -hmm. a female friend of mine who at the time went by the name L. Um, I came over to where you were living because she was friends with John Meese, who is Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox. Yeah. Uh, specifically, his parents had been in the movement that came in through the Antiochian Archdiocese. And I saw his prayer book and I got all excited and started speaking to him. And then you and I, I think I remember the first thing you said to me because I, I was referencing, I had been to Campus Crusade for Christ a bunch with some people I knew. And I referred to it as Campus Crusade yeah. for the Protestant Agenda. And you said, oh, what <laughs> Protestant denomination are you? And I'm like, ew, no, I'm not a Protestant. <laughs> Although the funny thing is, I was kind of like the logical conclusion of a Protestant at the time. But, um. Wow. What? I'm just. You were an uh, Aryan, dude. Are we not supposed to get like, nasty on this? Oh, yeah. You can get nasty as you want, but I'll get nasty back. <laughs> okay, boomer. 
Boomer. Okay. I'm, I'm not uh, a boomer, but okay. Uh, <laughs> no, no. So, no, no. You it's are, um, you are, you are non Trinitarian. Um, is this a roast? You were like, I'll destroy you. Like, what? Right. what, what you were non Trinitarian. You had, uh, didn't you have like a Mormon upbringing at one point as well or something like that? Um, okay. So, why don't I, I, I just quickly go yeah, through yeah, my it. background? Um, my dad, uh, was raised and still is Roman Catholic. Uh, my mom came from a Southern Baptist background. When they got married, though, mm. they were both sort of wandering. And so even though mm. I got a baptism in, in the Roman church, um, mm. they, uh, when I was a toddler, were Mormons for like two or three years. Mm. Um, and then my mom started going to an Episcopalian church for a little bit. And then when I got older, like middle school age, I got put in CCD, which is uh, what, you know, Roman Catholic kids do when they are growing up to prepare for confirmation. But I never basically did RCIA for kids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I never did the confirmation. So yeah, so like the Mormon stuff was was basically a, a piece of my childhood. And Sorry, um, I'm trying to fix my pipe. Mm, classy. It's got too much tar in it. It's tobacco <laughs> pipe, by the way. Um, that's less tar in my my lungs, though. So um, <laughs> no, no, uh, I don't have any pipe cleaners with me. All right, so we met at MTSU. Well, at at, at the your place old place I was place renting and everything near MTSU. Yeah, the place yeah. I was renting, but like <laughs> through MTSU and all that sort right, of stuff. Right. Um, and you and I decided that we were going to do what we ended up calling church clubbing. Church clubbing, I remember. Going, oh yeah, the, those were the days. Yeah, we uh, even going filmed episodes to, of it, but uh, we never loaded them. We were going to have our own. Yeah, like, you should bring show. them out. I felt I would fall asleep in them like half the time, though. Ridiculous. I don't. I I have like none of those files saved. I, that's like <sighs> a computer or two ago, and that camera uh, I, I used to film us on is like long gone. Yeah. So oh, that's fine. Um. Yeah, we went to all these different denominations. We went to like Church of Christ, Disciples of Christ, uh, obviously Eastern Orthodox, um, Oriental Orthodox. We went to um, St. Paul's. Did you, did you go with me to St. Paul's, the Episcopal Church? I think so. Yes, yes. <clears throat> yeah. Um, we went to like an LCMS parish. Um, we went to... We went to a Mormon. Obvi a Roman too. Catholic, obviously. Mormon. We went to Mormon. That, that was across we the went street to, from the Lutherans. It was, yeah. Yep. We did both we went the same to day, Presbyterian. Actually. Yeah, we went to Seventh day Adventist. We went to like everything that we could possibly. Mm -hmm. uh, it was fun. I loved it. Um yeah, loved, it was loved good time. the heresy looking back at it. Um, but <laughs> yeah. But uh you were drawn obviously to Eastern Orthodoxy. <laughs> yep. And at the time, so the way I remember it is I was drawn to Eastern Orthodoxy at that time, but was refusing to admit it externally yeah because i had is no idea until years later you're like i contemplated this for two years i'm like yeah. what all you did was troll me you turned yeah. to me during the service make fun of it <laughs> you made me cuss no, no, that, that was the first time that was the first time that was the first time i and that was just me still being a baptist so what i said was the, the phrase i said was look at all this idolatry i, I thought you just said highly idolatry I just remember or maybe whatever, you know, Highly something like that. Yeah, something yeah. like yeah. And then that's when you cussed me out. <laughs> but then no, no. Uh, when I we went to the Roman church at a different service, but it was about oh, the, the Roman icon. church is the one I was going to. No, no. So the Roman one, um, we we went to the the Saint Rose of Lima. We went to the mass there, mm -hmm. and I said, um, "Look, they have Jesus on the cross there because they don't believe he rose from the dead," and that's what I was taught as a Baptist, right? So right. and then that's I think that's when you cussed me out. Yeah. No, I remember specifically at St. Ignatius in Franklin, Tennessee. Oh. I don't remember where we were at. Uh in our I think I don't think I was a catechumen yet. And you were going mm. on about something. And I yeah. turned to you and I want everyone to brace themselves, okay? I turned to Adam James here. Ready to I, mute you? I mean if you want. I said, <laughs> shut the fuck up. I said that. And I said I said it loudly. 
And then a lady who had heard me say that and heard us bickering came up to us after the service and looked really like disheveled. And she was like, it's so great to see you guys. I'm glad you're here. And then you and I were both arguing on the, on the way back, which one of us actually upset her. I remember that. Now. Yeah. So, and I unjustly oh. got a reputation of being argumentative because you exist in my sphere. And, uh, you know, <laughs> um, I also just want to say mm. most of my orthosphere and like even other people I know that I sent this out to, I think understand, but some people were a little confused in the title. So the whole point of this is that you are an Anglican priest. I am a reader of the Eastern Orthodox Church, and this is about how we met and our journey together and yeah. then where we went to where we are now. So it's not me saying I, I jumped over to Anglicanism, although the fact that I sent you no. a picture of me doing the Western Rite within an Eastern Orthodox context, it was probably confusing for some people. Um, yeah, I, I imagine was, that would be. Yeah. Um, and Cause you're, you're, you're rocking the surplus and cassock and like, that's a Western thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I always wear a cassock in church. I mean, I have ever since I started seminary. Was it surplus and cassock? Right. Or do, wait, do the Eastern have a uh, surplus? We have a stakari, which is that robe that goes over. It's called a, a stakari. Is it white? It, it can be, but no, it's not always okay. white. Necessarily white. Okay. Um, but in a lot I'm trying of to image it right now. Yeah. And in, in a lot of Byzantine and Eastern parishes, they're fine. If you have a cassock on to just wear that, um, I mean, it depends on the, mm -hmm. you know, the jurisdiction. And sometimes it depends on what you're doing. Like my Bishop, mm -hmm. he is fine if you're just in a cassock, but if you're like carrying stuff for him in the service, then he wants you vested. So, um, mm. but yeah, so so this whole thing we're doing is basically our history together. Yeah, but the but it said us, but then both so, photos were were of me. Ahead. So I like I feel like some people thought like, wait, did you become an Anglican priest? I'm like, no, 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 that that's my friend who's hosting it. <laughs> so you froze for for a little bit. All right. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. So uh, it is interesting that trans uh, that transformation from like l the two pictures, right? So I cause, because when I you know, first met you, you were that you were on the left, right? With the uh, the profile mm -hmm. picture. By and the time then, you met me, like, my, my hair was tree. consolidated into like because there it's still on both sides of my head. But yeah, essentially so the one side. Yeah. 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 Uh, do you yeah. want me to talk about that at all? And like, you know, the, the, the fishnet, uh, uh, sleeves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, uh, lost most of my hair as we, we can see. Um, I, you there? I, I tell people oh. I dyed it so much that it died. Um, and mm. I always had very thin hair. So, and it would burn every time I would dye it. So, I mean, that was probably a sign that I was going to lose it. Um, but no, I I am not a I feel no shame at all in how I used to look. Um, in fact, I still enjoy people's reactions who are used to seeing me like this. And then other people are like, "Oh, dude, yeah, that makes mm -hmm. sense. You're totally punk rock, or like you're totally heavy metal, or like, um, yeah." So a lot of it was just I lost my hair, so it made sense to like cut it and keep it short. And that did kind. It, it was timed about you know, during my con conversion. So, I mean, I guess we could look at it um, as like a divine guidance, but, you know, I, I see pictures of people getting baptized that are coming out of the punk and metal world who still have like their gauges in and st stuff like that. So no one told me I needed to stop looking like that. Um, mm. I heard, I mean, like since then, I did hear that there were people at, my home church that did ask our priest if they should say something to me about it. And he said, no, don't, you know, don't say anything to him. And it's good that they didn't. Cause that might've turned me off. Like uh -huh. I just naturally kind of stopped um, doing all that stuff. And it wasn't until last summer 
that I started wearing my old uh, band shirts again um, because I've served with priests that wear like tool and nine inch nail shirts like under their cassocks and stuff. So um, there's nothing like forbidding people from doing that. It was just for me, I, I wanted to really shed myself of my old identity and, you know, for people only to see Christ. Uh, and then, and so I, I don't regret doing that, but you know, eventually you like, I, I, I learned how to sort of weave that back in to my life in like a healthier way where it's not idolatrous. Cause for me, like music and the way I used to look and stuff was very much an idol. Um, and so I'm not going to pretend like I've per perfected, you know, that, but, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with rocking a band shirt, you know, in, in of itself. Mm. Uh, it's asked, uh, Xavius asked what blend I'm smoking. It's a haunted bookstore or bookshop, uh, by Cornell and deal. I guess I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm just getting into tobacco, like pipe tobacco. So, um, and if I'm going in and out, blinking in and out of existence because of, uh, the, uh, the Wi-Fi, I apologize, but hopefully it just stays consistent, uh, at least for on Stefan's end. I have right. never smoked it a day in so, my life still. Um, yeah, talk about, like, never smoked before? Nope. That's right. Oh, we talked about that before. Yeah, yeah that's right. Mm -hmm. um, well, tell me what drew you to Eastern Orthodoxy then. Like, you already had, didn't you know the one true faith by looking, you know, to the Bishop of Rome? Like, the, the, isn't that the one true faith? See, my, my response was was going to say, it's it's the truth. And then be like, all right, done. Interview over. Good. <laughs> um, yeah. oh, okay. That, um, I mean, I think coming from a Roman Catholic background was helpful in some ways. Because for people who grow up, um, and not just like, Protestant, but what we would call like low church Protestant, um, you know, walking into yeah. any high church environment, right? Whether it is Eastern Orthodox or Oriental Orthodox, or even like a traditional Roman Catholic church, or even, I mean, even a regular Roman Catholic church, like it can be very shocking for a lot of them. So I, I, I am grateful that, mm -hmm. you know, my Roman Catholic background, I think did prepare me for a lot of things to not shock me. So like the imagery, the iconography was not a bothersome thing to me at all. The whole stuff with Mary, mm -hmm. like all the stuff that, that like bothered you didn't really bother me. Um, if anything, I had more. Well, obviously it doesn't bother me now right, no, for clarification. Right. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Um, yeah. If anything, yeah. I mean, you, you went and you uh, outed me as someone who, who was, uh, I guess effectively an Aryan or an Aryan sympathizer or, or whatever. Um, I actually had a harder time like digesting the Trinity, even though again, the uh, theological persuasion, not. Yeah. I, I was just thinking, especially cause I'm yeah. pale and I'm bald and yeah. Um, <laughs> did not see that coming. So, <laughs> um, the, <laughs> the, uh, I guess because, like, I remember certain Protestant friends of mine explaining the, the Trinity to me, and I remember one of them was just like, the Trinity is something you just have to accept. And I was like, no. And, and, and if the expression no you was, an ex was something I said mm -hmm. back then, that's probably what I would have said. Um, what really kind of helped me mm -hmm. digest the Trinity, honestly, is, like, when I would go to St. Elizabeth's in Murfreesboro and we would – experience the services just hearing the way it is like uh said in the hymnography and things like that and like some other things i can't really explain i started to process it better and then i said to uh father john the you know the priest there um i said you know i haven't really been accepting of the trinity for a number of years but after experiencing the worship here i'm like digesting, you know, what is going on in the hymnography and in the prayers. And I think I get it now. 
And I think you were there for that. So if you recall, his response was, hmm, mm -hmm. I don't get it. <laughs> and like that is when it actually clicked for me. Um, yeah. And yeah, now, I mean, I, I obviously I'm staunchly tr Trinitarian. Um, and, yeah. you know, I guess I could get really radical here and say, coming from a Roman background, I had the god of the F word, you know, the filioque. And that's very, you know, that's a distortion. So there's no way I could have fully processed it, you know, until I heard the Orthodox, the Orthodox version. <laughs> um, so. But yeah. No. Um, but I want to get no, back. No, what's into funny is uh, with the. Go ahead. Uh, well, Go ahead. I, I'm curious to hear what you're going to say, but at some point I want to unpack more. You're like secret investigation of Eastern Orthodoxy. Cause I mean, man, we would get into it hard sometimes. Like, you know, so finding out that that whole time you were actually like interested was a surprise to me. Now I've known that for like a few years. Why do you, why do you think I kept coming? To tell us you became Anglican. <laughs> no, that was before then. Like <laughs> I, I, I was looking for something that was liturgical and sacramental. So mm -hmm. Eastern Orthodoxy convinced me of the truth of uh, the importance of liturgy, the, the way we worship and the importance of the sacraments, the objectivity of like receiving, actually receiving salvation and being more than just like a, a quiz that you take at the end of your life. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so that was really influential upon me. Uh, but there were just some positions that I couldn't hold to. So that was what I was holding on to, to like reject Eastern Orthodoxy. And to this day, they're, they're still the same things um, that right. I reject within Eastern Orthodoxy. But um, so I was looking for something that had liturgical and sacramental depth. Uh, and, and that's how I became Anglican. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Got gotcha. you there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just processing what you, you said. Mm hmm. Okay, so what were you about to say before I rudely cut in? We'll blame it on the lag. No, um, yeah, the lag. Uh, so, uh, what was I going to say? I don't remember. Um, the oh, so like this is actually one of the things I appreciate more about the Eastern Orthodox is that uh, there is a, an appeal to mystery and, and a recognition that we don't fully comprehend things all the time. I was talking with a Roman friend of mine about a year ago, uh, who does apologetics online. And he was trying to like respond to uh, uh, a, a Muslim on YouTube trying to argue against the Trinity. And uh, I was pointing out that like you don't need to know every single answer to how everything works, like not being a contradiction, right? That, that's what right. you can point to. Um, and you have to say, well, show me an actual contradiction within the Trinity, not something that seems hard to reconcile, right? And he's like, no, no, you have to show that they're, you have to be able to answer every single question kind of thing because the Holy Spirit leads the church into all truth. I'm like, well, yes, the Holy Spirit leads the church into, church into all truth, but that doesn't mean the Holy Spirit already has like given every single answer to every single question that one can propose, right? It's mm -hmm. just like you have to be able to say the truth is given to us, but that doesn't mean that every single like factoid, like truth is more than just like, a bunch of facts that's able to be answered, right? Yeah. Um, so that that was a, a problem I found within Rome. And then finally, uh, he he admitted, he's like, oh, okay, actually, it does make sense that you aren't able to necessarily fully explain the Trinity. Like, mm -hmm. how could you fully explain God? <laughs> you know, that's what you're literally having to say. You know? Yeah. So um, that's what did, I was getting. Yeah. Did you ever seriously investigate going Roman, or was that just never really something? No. Okay. Yeah. Cause so, I, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. um, the, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, when you go to a Novus Ordo mass, your average Novus Ordo mass, there's just right. no beauty in it. it. It's like Baptists do better liturgy than that at some times. You know? <laughs> well, if you remember the first so, like, time, my first introduction to, to Rome was St. Rose. The first time Rome. was St. Rose. The first time that you went to, to a Roman other yeah. than my, my grandfather's funeral. My, oh, okay. my grandfather's funeral was the first one, but then yeah. uh, St. Rose 
Right. Uh, it was well, like since, the first like just regular mass. Yeah. Um, now I, I want to be clear. We're not casting shade on the many people we know who attended there that we still love dearly to this day. But I yeah. remember I hadn't been to a Roman Catholic service in a number of years. Uh, and I was excited to like bring you and to like show you kind of what my, um, you know, my upbringing was. Um, mm. But I think we had already, we'd already been to St. Elizabeth's, right? For Yeah. Okay. Mm. So having experienced, you know, Eastern Orthodox Byzantine liturgy and then going to, you know, a Novus Ordo, I was just like, what? Because yeah, the parish I grew up attending, um, you know, St. Patrick's in Armonk, New York, like they used incense. I, I remembered incense from when I was younger. I think at St. Rose, they, they didn't use any uh, when, when we went. And I was like, what's the deal? Um, and uh, so I, I remember feeling a little let down because I was like all excited yeah. to like bring you. And it was just kind of like, okay, this isn't too dissimilar from like, you know. A Baptist church. <laughs> right, or like, the disciples of Christ or the Lutheran ones that we went to, they, yeah. they, they were all, but then of course, like, you know, we learn about what happened at Vatican II and why those changes were made. Yeah. 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 So. And, and to be fair, when I say Baptist, I'm, I'm being a little bit hyperbolic. Uh, more realistically, it's about the level of um, your average Novus Order that I've been to is about the level of like a, a high church Methodist, basically, you know? <laughs> Um, yeah, there there are, and so that like that was just sort of. There are high church Lutherans, and the funny thing is, the Lutheran church we went to is Missouri Synod, uh, and they yeah, and it was really high church. It, yeah, it was at Orientum, and yeah, was it? I don't remember it being that, but maybe it was. Um, in general, though, I know that the Missouri Synod like often does their their services that that way, but um. I actually remember talking to you when we left that church about how liturgical it was. Um, so, what did I say? You were saying what you said. What did, What did I say? I don't remember what I said. I don't remember like specific details. I just remember you saying like that was very liturgical. But just basically, it wasn't very high high liturgy. Yeah. And I was just like, "What? Like, no, it wasn't." But I don't know. Oh, I did um, say it was very liturgical? Oh, interesting. You, yeah, you said it was. And I was like, I don't think so. But well, also, you know, now when when you study liturgy, you know, like I, I did in seminary for, for so long, um, you actually do start to see some of uh, these other, I don't know, like lesser forms of liturgy <laughs> to sound obnoxious. I guess yeah. but you start seeing some of where there was like some kind of um, legitimate or valid stuff going on, at least in the text. And then the way it gets performed may not be because like mm -hmm. if you look at a text of a Novus Ordo and then you go watch it done, you're, you know, you, you could be like, how, how did that translate to that? Like, yes, it's abbreviated yeah. compared to the ancient Roman liturgy, but um there's nothing in it that says like wear a clown suit or, you know, what, <laughs> like, you know, whatever. So, um, cool. You there? Yeah. 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 I was just reading what, um, Patrick Barnes said and wanting to acknowledge uh. that I read it. So, um mm. yeah no but yeah so it's uh i and uh did you ever go to saint patrick's the the Lincoln church with me no i never no, did i don't actually. think ever. okay i'm not yeah so when i went to saint patrick's and it's you know at the time it was a very high church uh anglo-catholic mm -hmm. parish it's not so much anymore but uh oh it, just, it was okay. yeah um father ray retired so uh mm -hmm. It's more of a low church, uh, not not low church, but much lower. Uh, I'll say. Um, mm. Anyway, we're talking incense. We're talking uh, at the time. Uh, we're talking, you know, genuflections all the time, <laughs> ablutions, everything, like the whole nine yards, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then also, I've uh, periodically I will go to the TLM in Nashville, 
uh, and it's it's beautiful, but it's just uh, it's not like one of the things I really think is important is that the liturgy be in the the language of the people, and so I I don't like that it is just Latin kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, and also it's beautiful in some ways, but also very. And this maybe sound like a Baptist thing for me, but like just very ritualistic for the ritual sake, almost kind of thing, where it is kind of almost a going through the motions oftentimes. Um, like you'll have the consecration just be sort of like whispered and that's about it, right? Rather you know, than it. But that's where hocus pocus and the hokey pokey come from. It's allegedly, of, that's that. Right, right, yeah. right, right, right. I mean, it's a cool story. It's that, you know, it's yeah. that, it sounds good. Um. Oh yeah, this is important. Yeah, Subumbra. Yeah, uh, hey Father James. Uh, in my personal experience in South Dakota, uh, LCMS is very big there. Uh, a huge mix of liturgical. Not that's true. Yeah, I, I I wasn't trying to say that it's only liturgical, but uh, specifically when it comes to the LCMS, every time I've gone to an LCMS parish, it is high church. Uh, but yeah, there are low church and, and non liturgical types of LCMS. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Subumbra is a really good. Uh, channel he does he used to be called young anglican and uh he does a lot of like anglican stuff and all that but mm -hmm. um yeah no i yeah so i would rome never appealed to me just never and like the papacy was the central <clears throat> issue because mm -hmm. growing up independent fundamental baptist the the thing that i constantly came across was the abuse that a single strong man has and um, seeing so many times a local parish with an unanswerable priest or pastor, uh, being Baptist, uh, pastor to where he can just do whatever he wants and cannot be questioned. And to question him literally is to question God. Like that's the sort of mindset that they had. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just trained because of just seeing the abuse that happens with that. Like, don't give that to anybody. And so um, the papacy just completely turned me off but then i'm like oh well i can't just be opposed to it because i don't like it you know kind of thing so let me like look at church history and then i'm reading church history and like sure there's a lot of respect for the the bishop of rome um sure mm -hmm. there's like a first among equals status right uh, yeah uh, but conciliarism is just true in the first thousand years like conciliarism yeah. is the position of the church the patristics and conciliarism is condemned by rome today and Vatican I is just not tenable as a position for uh, the early church. Uh, and what makes it worse is like Vatican I will say things like, you know, all the venerable fathers believed this about the papacy or that about the you know, about papal supremacy and about mm -hmm. papal infallibility. It's like, no, bro, it's just not true. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, that, that's my little rant. Well, it's interesting that, like, you know, the IFBs are, it sounds like they're kind of t taking a cue from the papalist mindset, mm. you know, and I've often said, and people really get on my case about it, but that Mormonism is like the grandchild of papalism because the yeah. Mormon president has way more power within, you know, the, the Latter-day Saints church than the Pope of Rome does. Mm. The Pope of Rome at least has to like answer to his college of Cardinals. You know what I mean? Like there is, yeah, he um, kind of technically doesn't have to. He well, kind of can just ignore them. Yeah. If I was gonna go back to being a papist, I'd be into like the Borgia papacies. You know what I mean? But anyway, that's a whole nother. <laughs> <laughs> Not actually. Like, like I don't actually agree with them. I'm just saying, if you're gonna buy into all of it, that makes the most yeah. sense because it's like, oh, he can literally do whatever he wants and kill people. Like, and don't go to school. You know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, and then a lot of the spicier stuff that the Borgias were doing. Um, right. You know. do, do you remember yeah. when I went with you to, what was it, Franklin Road Baptist Church? Yeah, I do. I had my Cradle of Filth shirt on. I think that shirt's in that bin over there. Um, uh, and it just showed, like, you know, demon faces on it, which were representing the band members. And I remember, uh, what's his name? Like, Sh Shelton something. He was, like, Smith? the Pope. Yeah, he was yeah. Like the Pope of the IFB. You know, what a great blessing for us. He was there th that night. Yeah. Um, and I remember you fell asleep in the middle of the sermon. And I was like, he's yelling. Like, I can't even <laughs> sleep if I wanted to. But 
you basically uh, were like, they give two sermons, or no, three, three sermons. K- KJV is the only real Bible. IFB is the only real church or the, a combination of, of the two. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, it was the combo this evening, I think. <laughs> um, and I remember he, he mentioned people from out in the world attending the service. And I'm thinking like, uh, I'm the only one that fits right now, especially because I still had my hair and everything. Yeah. And I think I wore like my, my like bondage pants with like, with like the orange straps all over them and stuff. Um, <laughs> And everyone was so nice to me. I was waiting for someone to like tell me off. Even that that nice lady that we met, she gave me a card when we left, and I oh. thought it was gonna be like, "Clean up your act, you you disgusting miscreant." But it, but it was like, "Dear Stefan, thank you so much for visiting us. We hope to see you again, and we wish you all of God's oh. blessings in school." And I was like, "Wow, like That's sweet." Yeah, it was really nice. So I think maybe we all learned a lesson about judging people that night. You know what I mean? Because I we can I, judge the liturgy, but we can't judge people, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah that that was that was very special. Um, now I don't know if I you had know, but, continued to attend right. there, which I wasn't going to. Maybe they they would have been like, yeah. shave your head and clean up your act or whatever. But you know, did it anyway without going anyone bald. telling to. You know. Yeah. No. Um. I actually for for matins and even songs still use the King James. Uh, so I, I, I love it. Um, I, I just want to address this Matt Scarpelli, who's like, the Borgias. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't actually like them, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm just like, it's too much to explain. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm just old and tired at this point. I just mean, if you're going to buy into the claims of papalism, like, you have to accept that the Borgia papacies were, like, the most top-notch. <laughs> like, uh, at least I haven't read all that. this yet. All right. It makes me uncharitable saying it, but I find the papists. Uh, yeah, Catholics. What's that the... about? <laughs> Orthodox are the real Catholics. I have a song about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should play some of your music from uh, from back then. <laughs> oh, I was like, I'm I'm happy to plug my music now. I mean, we keep going off all these side roads. I don't know how we're going to get into all this. I was we're just thinking, doing a chill stream tonight. Oh, okay, because I was thinking of like yeah. a linear time, but if we do that, we're not going to get anywhere. No, um, no, no. Wait, let me finish this though. For, let me yeah, finish yeah, this. Yeah, okay. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, it makes me uncharitable saying it, but uh, I find the, the papists to have the largest congregations but the weakest theology. Vast segments of their dogma is innovation, uh, innovative accretions they justify by fiat. Well, okay, I'll say this. I don't th- think they have the weakest theology. Um, I, I think that uh, compared to Restorationism, they are much stronger. So the Restorationists are what people think of when they think of Protestant, right? Which is like the Bapticostal evangelical types, you know, the non-denoms who just sort of like, I just love Jesus and, you know, relationship, not a religion, that sort of thing. That is the weakest theology, I would say. Um, but yeah, anyway, what did you want to say? What, me? Yeah. Uh, I think I was talking about my music. Uh, yeah, so I have some songs out there on Bandcamp with another guy that is a fellow Eastern Orthodox. Uh, he also likes metal and punk and, um, he sent me some, some instrumentals a few years back and Uh I had not done anything like that in close to a decade. I think it was like nine years. Um, Uh And the first one we did was called Orthodox or the Real Catholics. Second one was called mm-hmm. All Rights Matter. So, and I, I, I did a few more. They're on Bandcamp. I've actually been wanting to work on more stuff, but when I got into formal parish ministry, yeah. I didn't have as much time. Now I, I, I do have time. Um, yeah. But um, um, yeah. first of all, two things uh, for the people watching who don't know, he is the uh, originator of All Rights Matter. Stefan is. Oh yeah, um, I, I am the. Well, I say I'm the temporal founder of the hashtag all rights matter movement god is is the true founder is, i've got yeah. like 70 to 80 memes on my facebook i have them viewable by by request because i i keep my page very private like only people friends with me can see my posts only a few things are public but for that album just due to like the heavy requests and people wanting to share them i made mm-hmm. it i made it so friends of friends can can see so um nice 
yeah, but um, uh, and then the other thing was uh, SAS Attack. Is SAS Attack re released? Is there a re release of SAS Attack? I can send you that if you want. Um, you sent me the original. I have the original. Oh, okay, so what what he's referring to? That's my favorite is song you've ever done. <laughs> my okay, so I played in a bunch of bands when I was younger, and by the time I moved to Tennessee, I couldn't really get a uh, like a, a real band together. There was a bunch of people I would jam with. Um, so eventually, I I started doing a solo thing, just under my name, Stefan Emil Johansson. It was just simply that um and i don't know how to play any instruments so i use loops and um I, I i put the loops there and then i would rap or scream or talk or sing over stuff and so his, his favorite of that was called sass attack where it was a song about how sassy i was don't oh, repeat my, the lyric, but it's uh, <laughs> my buddy here, Anastasios Flocus. Uh, do I still own the fishnet cert? So, for those who don't know, Anastasios is literally my best friend from my childhood. You can tell by his name, he is Greek, he's half Greek and half Russian. Um, mm -hmm. so I had like you know, someone from an Orthodox background in my friend circle, which was very tiny because I, 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 I really had no friends growing up, still kind of have no friends now. Um, but it, it's funny because I often tell a story about like when I was getting back into like wanting to research the history of Christianity. Like I asked him about Eastern Orthodoxy and he told me if I wasn't Greek or Russian, not to worry about it. And I throw that in his face every time I see him now. I'm like, look at me now, you know. Um, but no, um, no um, Stas, as we call him for, for short. I do not have the fishnet shirt. I don't know what happened to it. It just got more torn and torn after a while. So I probably threw Makes it out. Um, I don't. Uh, let me get to this call. one. Yeah. Uh, Father James, what's the Anglo-Catholic view on the glorious revolution? Um, complicated. Uh, I kind of go back and forth on it. <laughs> so um, I wouldn't call myself a full-blown Jacobite, but I... Uh, and sympathetic to it. It's something that uh, outside of the uh, uh, of the UK, it's not as big of an issue, right? So it's not something that I like. You know, the 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 monarch of England is not in charge of the entire Anglican Communion. The monarch of England is the governor of the Church of England, which is that one province, right? Um, and you could say like subsequently, maybe with like all the other provinces that are that are under it. But being in the US, you know, being American. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. So, <laughs> it's so boring. No, <laughs> just kidding. Wow. I just wanted you to take your own medicine, you know, like falling asleep. Um, <laughs> it's funny because when you say Jacobite, I think of like the Syriac Oriental Orthodox Church because, yeah. of, you know, my studies in my circle. Yeah. So I forget that that word means something else when it comes to like white people and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Patrick Barnes is Antiochian. Uh, I too am Antiochian. I am a reader of the Antiochian Archdiocese. My home church where I converted is Antiochian. I've served in a lot of other jurisdictions. In fact, in seminary, I identified as trans jurisdictional. I actually said that publicly at a seminary dinner and made like everyone laugh so hard that I actually took a step back. And actually, the Syriac patriarch, speaking of so-called Jacobites, he was in attendance, and he told me that was the funniest graduation speech he had ever heard. So, <clears throat> um, so in re in response to this, uh, Subumbra, but like it's Jacobite, right? So it's um, it would be after James the, uh, uh, or is it Charles II or James the Second who leaves? I'm trying to remember. So it's King James the First, then Charles the First, then James the Second, then Charles the Second. I think that's how it is. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, like I said, it's not something I've studied immensely. I thought the Glorious Revolution, those who were opposed to that that revolution were the uh, Jacobites. But I could be wrong. I just, yeah. Um, you know, I love Charles I. Yeah, so Charles I is amazing. Uh, I have, I'm part of the Society of King Charles the Martyr. So, um, yeah, like I love uh, St. Charles the, the First, the St. Charles the Martyr. He's wonderful. Godly man. Anyway, go ahead. Um, I don't know. So 
let's let, let's take it back. So you can you can take this here. I'll say it this way, Stefan. Uh, King Charles the Martyr would rather have he died. He gave his life to not be a Presbyterian. So based, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to not give up bishops, basically. Right. Um. Man, so I was officially made a catechumen, right? September of 2012. So after attending Orthodox services for almost a year, um, mm -hmm. and my mom was living in Birmingham, Alabama at the time. So I I I I went to the services there uh, as well uh, when I would visit her, and it just became a thing for me to like, you know, obviously uh, to attend you know, the services wherever I went. Now I've been to over 800 parishes, uh, Eastern Orthodox and Oriental Orthodox. I, I, I do not consider myself an ecumenical person. But when it comes to the Oriental Orthodox issue, I think most people know that I am. That's the closest. As yeah. I was called a raging ecumenist by, um, by one of my fellow Eastern Orthodox guys. Um, and, uh, but, you know, mentioning father beza and everything like uh and you went with me to at least one coptic church in nashville during that time when we yeah, were hopping around yeah. and uh the thing is is like that was actually a pretty pressing issue for me was the eastern and oriental orthodox thing the whole thing with chalcedon um yeah and i mean it still kind of is that's i mean part of why i ended up studying at saint vladimir's seminary because they're you know on the forefront and have been on the forefront of that dialogue and um mm -hmm. anywhere from like a third to a fourth of the students at, le at least during the five years that i was there were oriental orthodox um, interesting and they, oh wow oh yeah oh you didn't know that yeah no. there's a whole contingent of them and um and it's been that way for quite a while um mm -hmm. yeah i mean most of the Eastern Orthodox seminaries have had some kind of Oriental delegation study there, but I think St. Vladimir's kind of takes the cake on like the most amount. Um, I mean, it varies from year to year with like Holy Cross and St. Tikhon's as well. Um, mm. But even, even Holy Trinity in Jordanville uh, mm. has had uh, many decades ago had Coptic students. Um, Interesting. You know, so I don't know. There's actually the, a strong relationship between the Oriental Orthodox and the Anglicans in Egypt, the, the Coptics, obviously, you know, in Egypt. Well, you know, they, go Egypt ahead. also has Armenian churches, too. I'm sure. I bet yeah. obviously it's primarily Coptic, obviously. Yeah. My point. I, I, but, I guess I didn't think about it. It makes sense that there would be Anglicans in Egypt because you guys are trying to go everywhere. But, colonize uh, everything. Just colonize the I know. entire world. Typical you know? white people crap, man. Like, what, what's going on? White power, you know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said it, not me. <laughs> I did not see that coming. Uh, I was first drawn to Eastern Orthodoxy by the Jesus Prayer. I, I love how you insert that. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be equal opportunity offender here, you know? Yeah. By the Easterners, I will say. <clears throat> By those Muslims who like Jesus, you know. No, <laughs> I've heard actually. You know what? No, no joke. I've heard people like compare Eastern Orthodoxy to Islam, and I'm just like, dude, like the iconography alone just doesn't allow for that. Yeah, I don't you know. Yeah, it's just I don't know. If they go into an Antiochian church, they're like, oh, you're using Arabic. You're a Muslim. You you called God Allah. I'm like, yeah, that's the Arabic word for God. <laughs> like, yeah. <clears throat> uh, anyway. Um, I remember Jesus having prayer. to warn people about that when they would come with me to, to services because when we did the uh, Trisagian hymn, we would do it yeah. in Arabic um, mm. once. And so I would I had to explain that to a lot of the Protestants that would go with me to St. Elizabeth. I'm like, you're going to hear the word Allah in this one hymn, and it's just the Arabic word for God, okay? Like, yeah, it's not a jihad. <laughs> right. Well, actually, <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah, well, no, yeah. no. <laughs> jihad means a spiritual struggle. So actually, that, yeah. that is a Christian concept, too. It's it's been hijacked for bad purposes. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you just have fewer bombs in your jihads, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <clears throat> uh, once I understand the essence, energy distinction, <clears throat> apophatic theology, and theosis rather than penal substitution, 
uh, I, I guess I knew orthodoxy, Eastern, Wait, Eastern, Eastern Muslim. Barnes, are you the guy that does orthodox info or something? You know, wait in that chat. Or do you know the answer? I don't know. Yeah. I've seen Patrick Barnes on here, um, I think, before, but I don't, yeah, I don't know much. I, I don't think I know him in real life. I, I, I highly doubt I do. But yeah, mm. anyway. Um, no, the, uh, oh, what were we getting to? You're talking about uh, Eastern Orthodox. Okay. So, yeah, let's get back to this one. Uh, Why? Jesus prayer. I loved, I love the Jesus prayer, right? You know, um, I, I'm still a bit hazy on the, or a bit wary, I should say, on the uh, essence and energy distinction. I talked a little bit with Luigi about that. Um, I just, it, it's one of the thing, those things like with uh, presuppositionalism, for instance, uh, where, you know, however people define it in front of you is how it's, you know, it, it's just sort of, it, it constantly defines, it gets different definitions depending on who you're talking about too. So I want to uh, actually like study what Gregory Palamas actually says and get to that. Because if we're talking about like just sort of like, um, <clears throat> I, I, I don't know where it's just like the grace of God, for instance, or something like that, then sure. But if it's like an ontological aspect of God, that's to me where it becomes a, a problem. I know we didn't want to talk like too seriously get in depth about the yeah so like i I'm literally not, yeah, addressed yeah. this to him i said i yeah, do yeah. not want to talk about the essence of yeah. the jurisdiction however i will say one thing uh -huh. saint basil talks about it too so i think you guys acknowledge him well yeah and we could talk about for instance like um like the analogy you used of like the sun and then like the beams coming down and all that sort of stuff. Like there's a way that you can understand that in the west right and if you want to say that that's all there is to the essence of energy to distinction i'm like okay sure whatever kind of thing um it gets into the questions of like the ontology part with, with it but i want to address again, like I said, andre just... fonseca the funny thing is i was gonna suggest later you and i do a whole session about ordination and sacramental mm. recognition but because a question was put forth here uh, yeah. i might as well address it um so this is very interesting because the technical answer now would essentially be yes, we would not like if if my dear friend here converted to orthodoxy at like, well, depending which jurisdiction he came in through, we might just totally baptize him and, and just start him fresh. Like if he came in through like Rokor, uh, and that's important. Remember, I said that. Um, mm. but if he came in through my archdiocese, the, the Antiochian likely would receive him by chrismation. Uh, but yeah, if he wanted to get ordained, we would, uh, you know, st start over. Some people get fast tracked. I have a classmate from seminary, uh, who was, uh, he was a Roman Catholic priest and then he was a priest. Uh, so, so he was a Roman Catholic priest in Northern Ireland. Then he came to America. Mm -hmm. And he joined what's called the Anglican Catholic Church. Then, which is quite the switch, right? which is really interesting. Then yeah. he became Eastern Orthodox, and and then of course yeah. when I posted about his ordination a couple of years ago, I said he was Roman Catholic, Anglican Catholic, and now he's Orthodox Catholic, right? Because the proper yeah. title of the Eastern Orthodox Church is the Orthodox Catholic Church. Uh, I mean, yeah. that, that's a fact. That's not me being like. Mm. Um, by, by the way, you but, we'll have a, a true moment of ecum ecumenism right here. Okay. Stop referring to, and not you, obviously, because you know this, but like yeah. to everyone who's watching, stop referring to the papists, Roman Catholics, whatever you want to call them, as Catholic. We, we just need to stop that. Not because we're trying to be mean, but like, what do we confess in the creed? One holy Catholic and apostolic church. Mm -hmm. Stop like training your brain and your mind and your body into like accepting the idea that uh, a necessary component of Catholicity is being under the Pope. Like just stop. Sure. So anyway, yeah, that that is one thing that you and I agree on, and and I actually, again, even though we have plenty of things we don't yeah. agree on, I do appreciate you preserving like a Catholic identity, uh, yeah. in in that sense, because yeah, like, um, the Roman Church's official name is the Roman Catholic Church. They will deny this, but that is, I mean, Vatican One. They argued about what to officially like call themselves on all the documents and Roman Catholic won out. So the, that's a historical fact. Um, you know, the, 
I don't mind saying Eastern Orthodox, but that's never really, I mean, we accept that as a name, Mm -hmm. especially in the Western hemisphere, but that's not really the official name of our church. It is the Orthodox Catholic Mm -hmm. church. And a lot of the older churches here in America on their cornerstones, and even in some of the signs that are out, they'll say things like Russian Orthodox, Greek Catholic, or just Orthodox Catholic Mm -hmm. or something. Some of them will say like Mm -hmm. Eastern Orthodox Catholic, or, Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it it becomes very wordy, but, but anyway. Well, one of the complaints I get from people when I point this out and I say, at least say Roman Catholic, right? Right. The the papists will be like, well, how dare you? Because there are Eastern Catholics too. I go, They called themselves Roman Catholic historically. That's a fact. I have books that'll prove that. Yeah. And Uniates. They call themselves Uniates too. They did. And they don't like when we call them that, but that's what they call themselves. Yeah. But also like when you have as literally a necessary component for Catholicity being under the Bishop of Rome, unless, you know, he decides to move to Avignon, but you know, whatever. (laughs) We we don't talk about the Avignon years. No, we don't talk about that. This is a bad, a bad few decades, you know? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. I had to move out of mom's house, you know? um, But when, when you literally have as a necessary requirement for, for Catholicity, being under the Bishop of Rome, we're going to call you Roman. Like that, that just, like yeah i'm sorry and like it's not an insult yeah uh, a previous pope uh forgive me i don't remember if it was i want to say john paul ii but i don't think it was him i think it was someone prior to him they said there is nothing better than being a roman catholic and like this was a pope of rome that was also very involved with mm-hmm. the oriental and eastern and you know the various uniate mm-hmm. Um, liturgies too. So he wasn't telling them that they were invalid. He was just saying like, we're all Roman because we're under me. So, you know, it's like- But you know what is funny though? It's gaslighting at at, at its highest. That's what it is. You know, you know, the funniest thing though is the people who hate the Uniates the most are like trad papists. Oh, I know. They're the ones, which is the funniest thing to me. Some of the most vitriolic, like anti-Western people are Byzantine uniates, often from the Melkite ju- jurisdiction, but, but oh, I was going the other way actually. I, yeah. I'm talking about like the TLM types and all that sort of stuff. They, no, they, I know, but yeah. um, yeah, yeah. So I'm saying, right? So like, what I'm saying is like the other side of the coin of what you said. It's like it's like it's funny you say that because uniates tend to all be very yeah, anti-Western, especially when they're Byzantine. Um, yeah. but anyway, back to the Anglican thing. So my classmate, mm-hmm. he was ordained or reordained or whatever you, you want to say, he went through all the ranks again to, yeah. to, to, to be a priest. But what's interesting is Rokor, the same jurisdiction that would baptize you back in the, like the mm-hmm. 1960s under uh, Metropolitan Anastasi was at a conference that like the Russian church abroad, as it was called then, mm. had with, Anglicans, um, and I, I mean, effectively, what you know, we would see as uh, Episcopalians, yeah, and said any Anglican cleric received into the Russian Church abroad will be received in their order. So it's interesting. Interesting. Rokor got a lot stricter on that. Not too long after that, I don't know if it ever mm. happened, but um, mm. and even the Patriarchate of Constantinople, I think addressed this in the 19th century. He said like Roman orders, Anglican orders, Armenian orders, all of these are equally valid to us, but it was kind yeah. of like left ambiguous. Well, what does that mean? Yeah. Um, but generally speaking, I know of no case where an Anglican or Episcopalian cleric was received into Eastern Orthodoxy in their rank. Some of them were fast tracked like back into being deacon or priest. Yeah. Uh, but they were not received as that. Um, but I have a friend who uh, I have a friend who was a clergyman within the Anglican tradition um, and left for Rokor. And my understanding is that he was, you know, uh, quote rebaptized all the mm-hmm. way up to his his uh, priestly um, ordination. Um, the is that uh, Joshua Elijah. I, I'm, no. no. Oh, okay. oh, 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 sorry. Father yeah, yeah. Joshua now. I, I, I wasn't going to say, uh, but yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. Well, you were um, dropping all kinds of other names. We're not saying anything bad. About no, it. you're the only one who's been dropping names. I try not to drop names. You've named parishes. 
You like g- gave out like people's addresses. You're just like you named Saint Rose. I only named Saint Rose as like the first place I've been mm. to. Then you named Saint Ro- Saint Rose when I was talking about an experience I had at a parish that was just no you so far. No you. <laughs> Um, what's the word y'all are saying to call papists? Well, you can call papists. them a variety of things. Papists? Or papalists. Okay, I literally was told uh, by somebody, papalist is like less offensive. And I'm like, you're adding two letters to the same thing. I, that Some of the things people okay. want to get offended by is really, really stupid. Yeah. I actually want to talk about that in a second. But yeah, papist, papalist is fine. Romanist, Roman Catholic is fine. Uh, those under the Bishop of Rome, like, just don't call them quote, Catholic. Like, don't begin and end with it being Catholic. Right? You could literally say Latins yeah. or Uniates if you're, like, speaking specifically about... Oh! Uh, he's talking about Uniates. Okay, that's for Eastern... Oh! Uh, how do I... How do I join yeah. this chat? It's spelled U-N-I-A-T E. Right. Historically, oh, it was spelled without It's U-N-I-A-T-E, yeah. Historically, was spelled without the E. Like if you Oh, really? Like, I didn't Fortis, know that. Yeah. If, if, if you read Fortescue... Oh, excuse me. Yes. If if you read Fortescue or Atwater, who are faithful Roman Catholics, they will use that word, but they'll they they use it without the E. So I think the E was added. And yes, thank you, Patrick. Yeah. Yep. Um, that, that's true. The Antiochian Archdiocese plugged all the words in to uh, <laughs> a lot of our texts. I, and uh, now we're just going to start complaining about papists. Um, so I have a lot of good papist friends, right? Like I have, you know, papist friends who are fine. like my bro- my own brother is a papist, and he and I is, are fine. We love each other. We're like the best of friends. But um, I'm gonna tell you guys, please, please, please stop being so easily offended. Please, <laughs> they I I have never met like like. Papists and Muslims and atheists are like the three most easily offended people okay, I've ever. Okay, you're gonna get bombed. So <laughs> say, say say goodbye to James Gad, everyone. He's about to get caught <laughs> by all three groups. And we didn't no. dare talk about the other group. You can never say anything bad about. <laughs> How dare you? Yes, no. Um, <laughs> no, but like seriously, I can't even I can't even say Roman Catholic without people on like X or just on. Facebook, There's articles on EWTN. There are articles yeah. on 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 Euton, <laughs> ew, mm. uh, about <laughs> ew, how Roman ew. Catholic was made up by Anglicans, and like it's not true, dude. You used you it want, at, at, at the Council of yeah. Leon yeah. in the letters yep. you wrote uh, to like the various Eastern and Oriental churches, even what you could consider yeah. technically pre. It's used in Vatican One. It's, yeah. yeah, and even in like the pre schism because. When it comes to the great schism between East and West, I'm not a team 1054 guy. I'm a team 1098 guy. Um, so mm. around the 1070s was the earliest I have found. A local council being held mm. in Rome said, our local Roman mm. Catholic church. Now, it didn't mean what like it kind of means now, right? Like the whole church. It literally yeah. meant the local Catholic church of Rome. Yeah. But still, like you start seeing it in the 11th century. So... It's not something Anglicans or Protestants or even the Eastern Oriental Orthodox made up. You made it up. It's your phrase. Own and, it. Yeah, and I've I've read those like you know Papist answers, you know Catholic and quote Catholic answers, mm-hmm. uh, and and EWTN and articles answers. and stuff like that. <laughs> I should do like a parody. We should do a parody website called Papist Answers where we give like very Papist uh, answers that are just really bad. But like they're on the verge of maybe they sound like something a papist would say, you know. But um, you know, and they they're they're doing these these games of like, well, the product, you know, the Anglicans start calling us, you know, Roman Catholic, and all it, it, as if it's just some sort of like dig. It's like no, no, no. Like wh- whether or not like the dig is intended there, the whole point is like for for right or wrong, we're saying that we're part of the Catholic tradition. Like if you read even like John Calvin, uh, certainly Luther, certainly Cranmer, and, and like the other reformers. They're not saying they're they're not intending, we should say, at least externally, like we're trying to break away and start our new thing. Now, you can argue that that's what they did, but you can't argue that that's what they're trying to display themselves as. They're trying to understand themselves as a continuity of the Catholic Church. So they're immediately obviously going to not recognize that uh, 
papism is the Catholic Church, right? Sure. Um, and you see this in like John Jewell uh, as well, um, who's who's like a little bit later, just just after the Reformation, but still very much an authority for for uh, the, for understanding the Reformation. Um, and like you can disagree with that all you want, but stop reducing it to just like oh well you're just being mean and nasty. Like no, that's like we consider ourselves Catholic. We confess one holy Catholic and apostolic church. That's literally in the creed that we confess every Sunday. So, yeah. And I'm not, I'm not going to lie. You know, I got to be able to call out my own people too. There are plenty of Eastern Orthodox people who like don't understand this. And that is like criminal. Mm. Okay. I met mm. a guy in New York city who said, we need to change the creed to say one holy Orthodox and apostolic church. And I'm like, you want to change the creed? Those people you're trying to say were not did that. <laughs> That's why you condemn them. Right. Because they, I, then, because they changed the creed. And I'm just like, what? And I've had people from Orthodox homelands. I don't mean to sound racist here, but these uh -huh. ethnics who have like gotten on me for using the word Catholic. And I'm like, it's literally our word. It is a Greek word. If universal was what that word meant, the ancient Western church would have said universal in their creed, but they didn't. They transliterated the Greek yeah. term Catholic. So Catholic mm -hmm. means Catholic, means wholeness. Yes, there's like a universality co component to it, but they're not synonyms. They're, they're like, yeah. Yeah. So um, it's just, ugh. And I, I mm, anyway. Let's talk about this because um, no, you immaculate heart weird. Get, get this guy out of here. Get it. No, no, <laughs> no, no, I'm just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, this is actually what I appreciate. So, what, one of the things I really dislike about like Roman dialogue with uh, with anyone who's not Roman is like there's this complete insistence about being upon becoming Roman, but like at the same time they're like, well, not that you're like you're you're not going to hell. You're still in the church, but like you should really be in the Roman Catholic Church. You know, it's just like okay. Either you want me to become Roman because, like, my soul is in danger of hellfire, and like I'm going to hell unless I'm you know submitted to the Pachamama worshiper, or, <laughs> um, or like you want to be a Vatican II boy and just be like, oh, you can believe whatever you want. You can be an atheist and still go to heaven, and like stop bothering me about becoming Roman Catholic. Right? You mind if I grab a stack? Like one or the other. Is that yeah, go ahead. Read? All right. No. I found these old um, school so what are your thoughts that? at a gas station, nice. Chester's for in a flaming hot, of course, because I love spice. Nah. You know. Oh um, yeah. Okay. All right. Um. No, but what are your thoughts on that? Because, like, kind of basically, I'm tired of the whole game of like, oh, well, you know, even an atheist can go to heaven, but you know, you should really become Roman Catholic. You know, I, I hate that game. What do I think about that? Yeah. Um. I mean, I feel like I might have a similar view of my own church or my own mm. co communion of churches, whatever phraseology you, you want to use. Well, like you, you believe that, like, not that you would say just, oh, you're going to hell, but mm -hmm. like you would still say that salvation is found within the, the Catholic Church as understood by Eastern Orthodoxy, right? Yeah. I mean, and like you might not. You might not want to say something like, well, I just know that person is going to hell, but you're also going to say like, actually, it's a, it's a danger to your soul, right? To not be uh, in the Eastern Orthodox communion, right? Um, yeah, I don't really want to talk about this, but uh, <laughs> um, okay, look. We're, we're in agreement here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. So, Okay. Yeah. I remember a specific conversation I had with you yeah. and back, you know, and if people don't know. James and I here, we used to get really spicy oh, um, yeah. online, in person. Um, and um, actually, Cheryl commented on my Facebook and said, this is going to be spicy. So let's, let's make it spicy. So yeah. um, I, I, I said something to you when you were asking my uh, opinion about this. I might have been a catechumen or maybe I, I was still uh -huh. inquiring. But um, I said like, you know, the closer you are to the truth, the more accountable you're, you're held. It was kind of like my point. Yeah. I don't think I, I remember you it. telling me that. Yeah, yeah. I think the way I worded it, 
because when you flipped it back on me, like, I don't know, years later, like a typical woman does, um, (laughs) (laughs) you were like, I remember you cautioning me that the more I studied Eastern Orthodoxy, the more I should be careful uh, because if I reject it, I go to hell or something. And I'm like, yeah, like obviously somebody, so like, let's say someone like myself, um, if I were to leave the Eastern Orthodox church you know, based on my beliefs, I believe that, that I would yeah. at least be in very, very bad danger of going to hell. I don't know that I'm comfortable no. saying, yes, I'm going to hell. Yeah. But. No, no, no. My whole point is this. I, I'm agreeing with you. Okay. Right? So I, I appreciate the I person. I guess I'm not who, used to that, so I'm a little confused. <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate the person who is willing to tell me that I am in danger of hellfire for not being part of their communion, if that's what they actually believe. But right. if you actually believe that, then actually believe that and tell me that, right? Mm-hmm. Don't like play the double game of like, oh no, you know, it doesn't matter. You could be an atheist. You could be like you know, a mass murderer atheist and unrepented, and you're still going to heaven. You still have a good shot, you know, like the Pope Francis kind of way, you know. I um, see. Just worship some, you know, in the morning you worship some Pachamama, in the afternoon you do some gay blessing couple thing and all that, and like you're good, you're, you're good to go, right? It's just that's the that's the Catholic way, right? Why um, is Dylan charging four ninety nine? No, no, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Thank you very oh, much, okay. Dylan. It's a it's, oh, we uh, don't. Uh, sorry, sorry. I'm. Yeah. Yeah. This is the first time I've actually been on a show like this. Isn't that weird? I'm like so oh, yeah. famous in like other spheres, uh-huh. but here I'm just like kind of like what? I'm the boomer <laughs> but, now. Yeah, you're the boomer. <laughs> but like. I really hate the whole, like, we don't actually believe what our church communion teaches, that, like, there's no salvation outside of our communion. I see, yeah. Um, but we're still going to try to, we're still going to try to convince you to become part of Roman. Like, I, so, for me, I would rather someone be Eastern Orthodox or Roman Catholic, as opposed to Baptist, for instance, right? Um, because I believe that you guys are closer, much closer to the truth than a Baptist is, right? Um, I would say that uh, when it comes to the church, that that would include Anglicans, Roman Catholics, Eastern Orthodox, uh, honestly, anyone who is baptized, Trinitarian baptism, because baptism is what brings you into the church. Not that I'm saying you agree with me on that, but my point is that. Yeah, I definitely don't. But yeah, I get it. Yeah. But my point is that uh, I'm not trying to convince people that there's no salvation outside of the Anglican like tradition, right? Because that's not the full, that's not the fullness of the church to me, right? Well, and that's I see not. It, that that's not the Anglican. That's never been, yeah. The yeah, position. like yeah. you guys invented branch theory, or at least that's how they, yeah. you know, that's how it gets per- presented. You know, yeah. yeah. Um. So, like, my point being that, like, so that's why mm-hmm. I'm not trying to like go out, out aggressively trying to make people Anglican, right? Sure, I get it. Um. So if that's and your position as that. a, yeah, that's if that's your position as a Roman Catholic, like essentially the same as mine. Stop trying to make me become Roman Catholic. You know, I get what you're saying. Yeah. If so you actually, if you yeah. actually believe that I'm going to hell because I'm Anglican and not Roman, then tell me that. Like, have the have the, I was going to say another word, but have the gall to actually tell me that you believe I'm going <sighs> to hell. You know. So that, that's it. basically what I'm saying. I got yeah. it. Right. It's 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 kind of um, like let's let's get through. Oh, good. Yeah. No. Look, these guys are asking us questions, but this is supposed to be about our 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 history and our journey, and these people like. <laughs> Uh, but hey, thank you so much, Dylan, for the uh, super chat. Uh, do either? Well, I guess because you're a high donor, he's got to answer your question now. All right. Oh yeah, totally. Oh yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, visible invisible church distinction. How does it relate to the Catholic Church? All right. Uh, do you want to answer this first, or I can answer it if you want? Um. So there's an expression that gets thrown around in in, in modern Eastern Orthodox circles. It's uh, we know where the church is but we don't know where it's not. And uh, Father mm-hmm. Andrew Stephen Damick, who is a, a fairly famous priest of the Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese of North America. Wow, we do use a lot of words, don't, don't we? Um, he addresses that saying, I think in the best way, because he says, while that's true, and we need to like admit that, that's not an excuse for like not evangelizing people, not trying to bring yeah. people into the church, and and we cannot deny that we know that, that, that we have the fullness of that truth. And it's not because we want to dominate people. I think he said something like, it's because we can't bear to be without them. Um, mm-hmm. And so I thought that, that was a nice way, way to put that. So 
I mean, like, if anyone is doing something good, it has to be of God. Even if an atheist is doing something good, right? Like, yeah. um, even if they hate God or they don't even, like, know who God is, right? Um, because all goodness is, is of God. <clears throat> um, but that doesn't take away from, like, the visible, physical entity. Um, so I know a story about uh, Bishop Basil who recently retired. He was the Bishop of um, Wichita for the Antiochian Archdiocese. Um, mm. And there was a guy who said to him, well, all of my beliefs are Orthodox. And Bishop Basil said, well, that's nice, but you're not. Uh, <laughs> so I like that. I, I think... Uh, that's, a, that, that's a cool answer. I like that, actually. Yeah. Um, and and I, I want to point out... Wait, do you see this? It looks kind of like a Byzantine icon. It's a it's an icon of the Blessed Virgin, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and, and then right there is my prayer corner. That's where I do my morning and evening prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a bunch of icons on it. Most of them are Eastern influenced. Oh, look at you. Yeah. Um, I'll give my answer to this one. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Uh, so, yeah, there is a visible, invisible church distinction. And anyone who just, like, thinks about this for more than five seconds, I would say, has to hold to this, right? Um, because the visibility of the church is found in baptism in confirmation, chrismation, in the receiving of the blessed sacrament, holy orders, et cetera, right? That, those are the external signs, and sign is not symbol. Like, sign is not merely symbol, so don't take me saying sign is that. Like, sign is a... Stefan and I would agree that the sacraments are signs, um, but not just signs. Symbol right? means, to, um, like, unite, like, the mystical with, with the physical, basically. Um, symbol doesn't mean, oh, this represents something. Well, maybe it is with the Eastern, it, it, like what happens in popular conversation is sign or symbol just means like only a representation. So I'm, I'm just, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Fair. Yeah. 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 Um, so those are the external signs or symbols of the church. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can uh, receive those signs and like continue in sin that grace may abound. Right. <laughs> You know, and just do whatever you want after that, right? Uh, like, okay, now I reject uh, Eastern Orthodoxy or, or I reject a, 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 the entire, like, Nicene faith or yeah, I'm an atheist now. Oh, well, it doesn't matter because you're in the visible church, so it's okay. Like, no, there is an invisibility to it. So if you're secretly an atheist, if you're constantly, when you're by yourself, blaspheming God, Lord have mercy, like, that, that is kicking you out of the church, right? But... E that's still the case even if nobody else knows about it. So there is a visible and invisible distinction within the church. Like, we have to have that. Would you agree? Yeah, and I like what Patrick Barnes just said, um, that we don't hold to an invisible church, but rather the Holy Spirit is free to act outside of the visible church. I think that's a less wordy way of, of what I was trying to explain. Um, <clears throat> All right. I'm going through some of these. Uh, if you want them right away, uh, do like Dylan did and do an, um, a, a super chat. Uh, I, I love super chats. So he's saying, uh, "Give money" is what he's saying. Typical, yeah, give money now. Typical Protestant pastor just wants your money. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Look at that rich apartment. Uh, Dodd, Paul James like, rolling in dough. <laughs> you know? Rolling in dough, totally. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, Father James, what do you think of the appellation of Catho Protestant for people? High church enough not to identify with being Protestant. I think just call them barely Protestant. Oh, oh, yeah, no. um, see what he did there. Yeah, no, but like I use the term Anglo-Catholic. That's part of uh, the the about me on the the YouTube channel. Like, I, I I don't think the word Protestant is actually very helpful because it's like the the there are confessional standards within various Protestant sects, right? So you've got Anglicans have the or Anglican formularies. You've got Lutherans have the Book of Concord, et cetera. So judge the particular sect upon its confessional standards, not upon like, well, you're Protestant. So like you're the same thing as like Joel Osteen. Now, like Stefan might think I'm the same as Joel Osteen, but you know, whatever. <laughs> no, uh, actually I actually don't. Okay, I'm kidding. Uh, am I worse than Joel Osteen? Is that? I mean, uh, at one point I might have said that, but now yeah. – I, you know, I do believe in nuance. 
um, yeah, hyper hyper qualification and nuance. If extra ecclesium nulla salus means anything, speak English. This is America. You so <laughs> <laughs> Your soul is in danger for not being in communion with whichever part patriarch. Yeah, well. Uh, actually, I would say not necessarily. So I would actually uh, agree fully with extra ecclesium nulla salus, salvation outside the church. But the necessary component, the, the minimal necessary component for uh, being in the church is faith and baptism, right? So uh, you receive God's grace through baptism and you uh, either you embrace it personally with your faith or your parents speak for you on that faith. So uh, you receive that faith through your parents, right? So that salvation happens within the church because you are within the church by via your baptism. So that, that's how I would say it. So it's not necessarily a patriarchate thing, right? So if you want to add to that. Um, okay, so you're familiar with these people we generally call the, the old ca calendarists. They're various groups that... Yeah. broke away from us um claiming the calendar issue but there was really other stuff that that was going on yeah. um and then they've also split off from each other and so it's kind of like i think that shows that we shouldn't take them very seriously but um one of them on facebook basically said to me <clears throat> a few years ago when i was in seminary he told me that the canonical world orthodox church holds to a form of papalism because i was telling him that he wasn't in communion with you know who we deem as the canonical patriarchs so he wasn't really orthodox or eastern orthodox yeah. or whatever whether it's um uh oh uh, what's his name kirill or uh bartholomew yeah right and and he said that was a form of papalism and i'm like well no, because I'm not saying that none of these C's can't ever make a mistake or err, because that's part of Roman ecclesiology is Rome can't make a mistake. And yeah. then they've like adjusted that to where if like his hat is turned to like three degrees or something, but um and uh is sitting in, in a certain chair. But I thought that was an interesting point to make. I didn't agree and, and thought it ultimately didn't carry a, a lot of weight. But like, um, so, I mean, I think in Eastern Orthodox ecclesiology, while like Constantinople plays an important role in, in a lot of stuff, and we also acknowledge that Rome did historically too, um, the faith is not defined by one patriarch. I think you said this to me one time when you were getting on about Patriarch Kirill when I was a catechumen. And yeah. you were like, why are you upset? Orthodoxy does not f rise or fall on one patriarch. And I was like, oh, I'm the one that should be saying that. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, uh, now I kind of forgot what the question was. Uh, I don't know. Let's, I, I think we're good. Uh, let me see. If yeah, the point is, is that like. Uh, the, uh, no salvation outside the church. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. I don't know. Um, Marmy, uh, hey Marmy, how you doing? Uh, any thoughts on the claims of the late Stanley <laughs> Jakey or Jackie or whatever that science was born of Christianity? Oh, I mean, I think that's true. I got plenty of like color. That's why Eastern Orthodox cannot believe in the Big Bang theory because a papist priest made it up. So, Are you serious or a joke? Let's figure it out together. Um, <laughs> like I would do that instead. <laughs> I was told in seminary that like I would say these outrageous things and people couldn't tell if I was joking or not because like my tonality would be uh, the same. And I, I admitted to uh, like a few of my classmates, I'm like, sometimes I'm kind of just figuring out what my life's gonna be like <laughs> if I commit to that. Um I you know, when when you met me, I was like more or less very pro-science. Um yeah. and I would I would mock like young earthers and stuff and like now yeah, I, remember I would probably yeah but i would now probably be con considered a young er earther because i you know i believe that the byzantine year is more or less give or take a few months how old mm. the, the earth is um 
And that is like insane to a lot of people now. Uh, mm-hmm. And I don't want to get, and again, maybe we can have a separate episode yeah. of, about yeah. that. I actually would like re- really enjoy that. Um, mm-hmm. But the, the biggest uh, text on this that is not really in print anymore right now, but I know people that have found like P- PDFs. I bought a copy at St. Vladimir's Seminary when, when I was a student there is Genesis Creation and Early Man. Uh, which is mostly uh, talks and articles written by Father Seraphim Rose uh, or Saint Seraphim of Platina. What was that face about? Um, but it, it, it was actually compiled by his spiritual son, Father Damascene, who is currently mm-hmm. the abbot of the monastery in Platina. And it's a collection of like various, like, fathers of the church and even more modern saints and what they say about it. So it's very well-rounded. Um, and I, re- I don't remember the context, but in one sentence in that book, St. Seraphim says this so-called big bang theory. And, and like, it gave me a chuckle. And then I thought, well, you know what? A papist priest is the one who came up with it. So like, we really aren't obligated to like affirm it. So, and, it, and it's a Jesuit, isn't it? So that's Jesuit not the worst. Or- Especially if you're Russian Orthodox. Um, In all seriousness, I don't think it's like, to use a Protestant term, I don't think it's a salvation issue. Um, Yeah. As long as we believe I hold to the Big Bang, by the way. What? I hold to the Big Bang, by the way. Of course, because like an Anglican, you're you're pretty much a mini papist. I mean, let's let's face it. Uh, Just kidding. Um, (laughs) uh, Yeah, so like I... I honestly have no strong opinion one way or the other. I don't feel mm. obligated to affirm it or even yeah. deny it because it's kind of like not, it's not yeah. something I worry about. That's the more uh, This is a good question. Yeah. So um, I, I don't know how similar or dissimilar it is concerning the West versus the East on this. But when I am, you know, when I hear old calendar versus new calendar, my first instinct is like thinking of like the Eastern debates on that. Uh, but I'm mm. not nearly so well versed in that. But as an Anglican, I this is my my old, old kind of this is what I use for study rather than using for prayer. But my my twenty eight prayer book, I've got like literally two dozen uh, twenty eight prayer books in my my, my belongings. Um, this one is uh, the the twenty eight prayer book uses what we would essentially call the old calendar. Uh, so prior to Vatican II, uh, that's that's the distinction we make when we talk about old calendar versus new. So I don't think that's don't what have, the person means, though. Or is I it? know, I know, I know. But like, I'm I'm just giving my explanation right now, and then you, if you want to talk about it, so yeah, like, yeah, I yeah, used I use the pre-Vatican II uh, liturgy, uh, the pre-Vatican II calendar. So we mm-hmm. don't have um, the feast day of Christ the King at the end of the the liturgical year. We don't have um, we we don't call it ordinary time, you know, things like that. We have the uh, pre-Lenten season. We have uh, the you know the, the the Sundays are after uh, Trinity Sunday rather than after sort of like Pentecost or Whit Sunday. We call it Whit Sunday, you know, all that sort of thing, uh, all those sorts of things. We don't make those shifts that happen with the new calendar. When it comes to the the um, lectionary, it's still the one year lectionary. We don't do the three year lectionary, so all that. Uh, but anyway, what, what are you? Yeah, go ahead. I, I just want to address this. Jesus is Lord 777 guy. Ken Ham is Orthodox mm-hmm. slash or whatever. The funny thing is, is that um, it was either him or Kent Hovind. It was one of those guys. They made reference to the book I just spoke about. Um, Genesis creation and early man. So that's kind of funny. Um, oh, sarcasm. Well, guess what, buddy? Um, one of those guys did make, make reference to that most holy text, um, and, uh, might've even been influenced by it. So, you know, pe- people steal from Eastern Orthodoxy all the time and don't even credit us, but, um, people steal from Anglicanism all the time and don't even credit us. Like, especially the Protestants, <laughs> like they, like constantly using, like even Baptists will use our wedding liturgy, uh, for holy matrimony. Mm. Um, so it's just sort of, it's hilarious. Yeah. Okay. So basically 
<clears throat> the traditional calendar for all Christians uh, was the Julian calendar. And um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just reading that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it gets a little more co complex, though, because, yes, then there's the Gregorian calendar, which when it was instituted by the, the Roman church, it was only 10 days off. Now there's been more drift. So it's 13 days off. So people on the old calendar who say, I celebrate Christmas on January 7th. No, nobody, not a single soul, celebrates Christmas, the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody celebrates it on January 7th. What they do is, if they're on the Julian calendar, the old calendar, their December 25th is falling on what, the civil Gregorian calendar is calling January 7th. But I served at a parish that was on the old calendar in, in Maine for a year and a half. So on, on days like mm -hmm. that, you, you open it up on January, on January 7th, we open up the texts in our books that say December 25th. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's, it's currently 13 day, days off, but like the feasts are technically the same. They're just, you know, if you're following the old, calendar, you're going to be 13 days off. However, in the Eastern Orthodox world in the 1920s, we came up with this, um, well, I have to be careful because I'm on that calendar and have been on it for most of my Orthodox life. But um, mm. I see you, Stas. Uh, I'll, I'll get there. Yeah, yeah I'll just get, finish up. and then. I yeah. love when people I know I'm in real life just... like, put forth questions yeah. that like I think some of them already know the answer, but they just want to hear hear me say it. Um, so in the 1920s, Patriarch Malitios Medeksakis of Constantinople came up with, um, actually, I think it was a Serbian guy, Serbian scientist and him came up with this calendar that is called the Revised Julian calendar, because you're still on the old calendar for anything of uh, around Easter. Or Pascha, right? Mm -hmm. So the the Pascalian is following the old calendar, but then you're on the Gregorian calendar for the other feast days. So Christmas falls on when your calendar says December 25th. Theophany or Epiphany is going to be when your calendar says January 6th. Um, you know, on on and on. Mm. But then you're following the old calendar for the Lenten cycle. You know, Pascha. Pentecost, all this stuff. And that actually, at least in the Byzantine, right, that literally affects you all year round uh, because they have the, uh, what they call the, the eight tone cycle that, you know, every week there's like a tone of, of the week and that's based on Pascha. So that actually affects you like just about every day of the year. Um, and it's created a lot of issues. Like this year, there will be no apostles fast on the revised calendar because uh, Pentecost falls too late. And that is horrible. But see, Finland, the, Ortho the Eastern Orthodox Church of Finland adopted the Gregorian calendar. Their Apostles' Fast is going to be longer than the Apostles' Fast that's on the old calendar this year. So based Finland, right? Um, and what people don't realize too, because there are Eastern... Or Orthodox out there who act like being on the Gregorian Pascalian is like some special sin where you go to hell with like pedophiles and people who talk during movies and, and stuff like that. And it's just like, <laughs> it's just like, um, no, St. Tikon himself blessed the Gregorian calendar for use in Estonia and in Finland. It's kind of funny that the churches that are following that are now under Constantinople, the ones under Moscow, uh, which is what he was over. Uh, went back to being on the old calendar, but nevertheless, the, the a, a modern saint of the church blessed that calendar. And this was a few years before the hybrid one was even an option, right? Um, I think that the Gregorian in its totality or the Julian in its totality makes sense. This hybrid calendar that we're on that, again, I obey it because I am on it, but my personal opinion is that it's very messy and the more I studied about it in seminary and then like, and then after being on the old calendar for a time, I was like, Oh, 
you know, like this is like so much better. Um, yeah. But I I obey what my patriarch, you know, says for us to do. And the funny thing is, the the Antiochian patriarchate, or if you, the 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 Greek Orthodox patriarchate of Antioch. Yeah. Um, or more accurate, the Roman Orthodox Patriarchate of Antioch, because you know, in Arabic and all those languages were actually called Roman. Um, <clears throat> uh, we didn't adopt the new calendar, the revised calendar, until after World War II. So we we held on uh, for a lot longer than some of the other churches did. Um, and uh, I know there are some Antiochian priests in America that I've talked to who would ra would rather just uh, you know be back on the old calendar. Some even think we should go full Gre Gregorian, but obviously we all just obey what we're we're told. So really, there's three calendars. Um, and I also want to say I post on Facebook about this, and I just want to say it here while we are being recorded live. If your excuse about why new calendar churches um, have to follow the old calendar for Pascha is because of the Council of Nicaea. That is retarded. Sorry. Because you're not obeying Nicaea when you mix the calendar. Because you're changing the equinox in, in the formula for Nicaea, which I'm not going to pretend I know every detail about. The equinox is March 21st. So March 21st, if you're on the old calendar, now falls on April 3rd. So what you're doing is you're you're changing the equinox to April 3rd if you're on this hybrid calendar. So mm. it, it's it's nonsensical. You're not actually obeying Nicaea. And if you do the math, um Easter or Pascha is supposed to fall between March 22nd and April 23rd. Fifth, I think. Mm -hmm. So if you're on the mixed calendar, this year it's on May 5th. Now, May 5th on the old calendar is like, I don't know, it's some, uh, when you cross months, the math gets complicated, but it's sometime in late April if you're on the old calendar. So if you're just on the old mm -hmm. calendar, then that makes sense. But Pascha is never supposed to fall in May. So if you're on the revised calendar, you're actually violating Nicaea. You're not obeying it. Um, and that's just a fact that, that that's, I'm fine celebrating it on the calendar that I'm on because I'm obeying my, my hierarchy. And yeah, people like, oh, mm -hmm. discount Easter candy. Great. Fine. Cute. Um, but like, mm -hmm. but if you're on the old calendar, you can make the case. It's not May 5th, right? That it's, hold on. It's, 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 this is going to bother me now. Um, okay. So May 5th, according to the old calendar is April 22nd. So yeah, that's if you're on the old calendar, then Pascha is actually April 22nd. Great, that's fine. But if you're on this mixed calendar, it is May 5th, and that actually violates that Nicaea. So, yeah. Here's um, a question for you. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, that's fine. Uh, about oh wait wait. Read it on. out loud. Yeah, Western Rite Orthodoxy is the same faith, isn't it, as yours? Yeah. So um. <clears throat> I am a reader of the uh, Antiochian Archdiocese under what's called the Greek or Roman mm -hmm. Orthodox Patriarchate of Antioch. And we have – most of our parishes follow the Byzantine rite like most other Eastern Orthodox. But we have parishes that follow the Western rite. The most recent parish I was assigned to in Massachusetts uh, is a Western rite Antiochian Orthodox church. Um, we have a Western Rite monastery here in Colorado, only about an hour and a half or so away from uh, my mom's house, which I'm in right now. I did my post-seminary internship. In fact, the photo that was shown of me on the still is me serving at that Western Rite monastery last summer. So I, I think some people got confused and thought like I was Anglican because yeah. it was me doing Western it's Rite. It's not your, yeah, it's not, yeah. Right. But I did it on purpose knowing that because I'm like, I got to show these Anglicans how it's done, you know? Um, so, so yes, the Western Rite is not only the same faith, but Rokor and the Antiochians are the only ones with active Western Rite churches at yeah. the moment. So the Western Rite 
parishes are under pre-existing Eastern Orthodox patriarchates. They're not like their own jurisdiction in of themselves. Um, if we had enough of them, I, I, I would say that they should be like, maybe, you know, there could be a whole episode about that, but as it stands now, um, it's, it's actually a lot simpler in some ways to just be like my archdiocese has two liturgical rites available to me. Um, and I am trained in both. Um, in fact, so this last Sunday I was at a Greek Orthodox church, but the weekend before that I went to serve with my same classmate who I said had been a Roman and an Anglican priest. He, he is a Western rite Antiochian Orthodox priest. And I went to serve with him all weekend at, at his parish Saturday morning. It was all in Latin or well, mostly in Latin. Um, and we did the liturgy of St. Gregory. And then the next day, Sunday, it was all English, the liturgy of St. Tikon. So, nice. um, yeah, cause we, we, we actually have parishes that do both. Um, and the parish I was at in Massachusetts also does Tikon and Gregory. Um, for, for those who don't know, the Gregory Mass is basically the Latin use, and the Tikon Mass is the Anglican use. So the Antiochian Archdiocese uh, approves both. That, that's very interesting, because I was told by people that the St. Tikon liturgy is never used. Who? What idiot said remember. that? Yeah. That they were trying to, because I would bring up like, hey, St. Tikon's liturgy is, is very much based on like the 28 prayer book. I'm like, oh yeah, but it's never used. I was like, Really? Um, okay. <laughs> were, were, if, if I may, were, were these people Antiochian? I think so, yeah. Then they obviously are very, like, uninformed because uh -huh. um, I have served the Tikhon Mass several times, even at the monastery, which uses um, St. Gregory as its Gregory. normal Mass. Yeah. Um, sorry, I still have that stutter. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, if anyone needs to know, I actually do have a stutter. Uh, I've worked very hard to, uh, o overcome my disability. I found out it was connected to a tongue tie. If you see, I have a very strong tongue tie and that makes it hard to talk sometimes. Um, so if you see me stammer or stutter or like freeze, I'm, I'm just, I'm just retarded. And Working just it through. Yeah, 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 yeah. So even at the monastery, when I was reading, the abbot was like, you pause on words sometimes. And I explained to him. And he's like, but sometimes you pause before the word the. And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. It's the word after the that's going to give me a hard time. So I know it. So I use the as like a like a springboard to like get to the word. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so at said monastery, the most holy monastery of Our Lady of Glastonbury in St. Lawrence, mm. Gregory is the normative mass. But while I was there, we did teak on, I think, 15 times. Mm -hmm. So, and, um, and I, I know it's been done more since then, but, um, yeah. So to say we never do Tikon now, Rokor, I think has done away with doing, uh, the Tikon mass, but I can um, see that. Yeah. But the Antiochians, no way, Jose, it is, um, it, it is definitely, I, I can tell you as someone who has served it mm -hmm. at this point, countless times, as well as Gregory, um, the Tikon Mass is definitely a Mass that we do. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it was, uh, I was talking to Eastern Orthodox people in California, and I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, I think they were Rokor, so that might have been why. Yeah. I mean, we do, it's interesting, because in the Antiochian Western Rite Vicariate, which is relatively small, so, it's like if someone says they know someone, it's like, I probably know who, who they are, right? Um, mm. There are parishes who started off as Tikon and then switched to Gregory. But the parish I was serving at in Massachusetts was a Gregory parish that started using Tikon a couple of years ago, and then they really fell in love with it. Oh, hey, Melky. <laughs> I would be happy to explain that. Hey, Stefan, can you explain why we should pronounce the ed in how we speak? Go ahead. So you have noticed that sometimes when I speak, I, I say it, the word correctly. Um, other times I don't because it's like a, a nuance. Yeah. So at this Western Rite monastery I was at, 
every word that ends in ed, unless it tells you not to, you pronounce yeah. as ed. And you know, if you do the English office, you know, in the hymns, they, they are metered that way. They, they will mm -hmm. sound like trash if you don't. Right. Yeah. But, and then I realized it when I was looking through traditional texts for the Byzantine rite, they yeah. also assume that you are pronouncing the words that way. And they'll tell you mm -hmm. when not to. Like, if you go to a normative Byzantine rite Eastern Orthodox Church, you will more often than not hear the priest say, blessed. Even if he says every other word the more modern mm -hmm. way. A few yeah. say blessed, right? But it's usually yeah. blessed. However, yeah. in the traditional metering uh, for Byzantine and also for Russian chant, it'll tell you when to say that uh, so um, when it wants you to pronounce the ed, or when it wants you to say the um, abbreviated way, it'll say B L E S T for blessed. And so other words are that same way too. So even when I'm typing to people, it, I'll I'll put a T. Like if I want to say I parked my car, I'll say P A R K T. Um, nice. And so I was texting, I, I was texting with Melky huh. be, before, and I said. I was talking about how I lost my hair and I said, God punished me. And then I sent him a voice text saying, yeah, that's punished, not punished. <laughs> so that's, what, yeah. Uh, so I, I similarly, when doing the liturgy, I'm very big on this as well. Not that it necessarily, necessarily is in every single uh, point, but you, I will pronounce the ED in such a way more commonly. Right. So, the Magnificat for, for Evensong, right? We have, He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away, etc. Right? So. Right. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And so. That's how it should be. And it's so important to make sure that if you are presiding over the liturgy, whether you're doing matins and even song uh, or, or Holy Communion, divine liturgy, you need to make sure that it is, that, that the wording is emphasized, that it's not just some sort of rote, uh, sort of uh, hap, you know, ha haphazardly done liturgy. I'm very big on making sure that I properly enunciate, that I am not just driving through the liturgy very quickly and just just doing it kind of thing. I'm very big on that. So, sorry. Yeah. Um, Celestine, what is from the 1662? I, I'm confused. Oh, yeah, oh you mean the, the, mag the Magnificat. Here. Um, my buddy yeah. Anastasia... No, the Magnificat. Yeah, the, that one is the 28, but it comes from the 62. Yeah. My buddy Anastasius. He says that you are so learned. Yes. Thank you. Uh, when we were younger... We call them Tasho. No one calls them that anymore. But he's still on my phone as Tasho. So um, uh, if, I, if, if you hear me say Tasho or Stas, that's all him. Uh, Although we came I up remember you talking about Stas a lot when we first started hanging out. Yeah, probably. Um, yeah. He, um, and also the funny thing is, so a lot of Greek people named Anastasios for some reason go by the name Ernie. So mm. a few years ago, we came up with the joke that he could be Ernie Flo. Because his last name is Flocus. So, yeah. um, uh, I want to get a burrito, like uh, at Blucos Burrito. Mm. Um, obviously, without any meat, but you know. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Because be, because you you actually fast. Good for you. I actually do fast. Thank you. One, one of five. I, I had to show off my fast. One of five Anglicans that actually fasts. For, wow. For no, no. no. Okay, fine. It's at least 10. It's at least 10. <laughs> Okay, I, I can't find it, but but Stoss here was asking me when I was convinced that Eastern Orthodoxy was like. Here it is, right here. I guess oh, you uh, did ask me that, and I kind of got off track. Yeah. Here it is. Go ahead. No other way. Uh, well, Stefan, at what point point in your journey did you realize that there was no other way for you than Eastern Orthodoxy? Yes, yeah, so that's a great, great question. Um, <laughs> so I had mentioned before I was torn between the Eastern Orthodox and the Oriental Orthodox. Um, and I thought like, wow, 
this is if 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 either or both have the one true faith, like how could there be a split like that? Um, mm -hmm. And ultimately, I actually think it kind of proves um, like more traditional views because despite fifteen hundred years of schism or so, we essentially do believe the same things. Like there are little things here and there that have come up since, but in terms of like the bottom line of most things. Uh, we're in full agreement. So to me, I was like, okay, so they're both true. Now, which one do, do I join then? Um, honestly, like I went with Eastern Orthodox because one, it was more readily available. I was in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and mm -hmm. you know, the Antiochian church there, St. Elizabeth's at the time was like, you know, a good, like a walking distance from, from the campus. Um, if I, if I had gone Oriental, I'd need to like go to Nashville to go to like the Coptic services. Although there is, like, there is an, um, I can't remember if it's Armenian or Coptic, but there is, there's a Coptic Oriental one church. in, in, in Murfreesboro now, in Murfreesboro. but at the yep. time it was, and then while, yeah, yeah. I, while I was still there and while you were still there, like, you know, before one opened up in Laverne, um, mm. which is in the same County. So, um, and the thing is, is like, as a former Roman Catholic, you know, historically, my ancestors accepted that, you know, the Council of Chalcedon, which is like the burning thing there. Um, and honestly, even though I wasn't tapped into the Western Rite, uh, and yes, that's T-A-P-T, -T, tapped, not taphead, um, knowing the Western Rite existed was like, like just a comfort because I was like, oh, if I, you know, as a Westerner, I can be. Yeah. Orthodox. I, I I know you know you would pr prefer I say Eastern Orthodox, but it, it like no, call it what you think it is. No, yeah. yeah, like within my own context here, you know, as the Orthodox Catholic Church. Now, on the other yeah. hand, the Oriental Orthodox have four d distinct rites. So, I mean, that was a a good thing in their favor if you want to be a liturgical nerd. Yeah. Um, but um, also the Eastern Orthodox have more of like a convert culture even though it's still sort of figuring itself out whereas the the oriental orthodox uh don't like there are converts the oriental orthodox like of course um but there's just like they they are where we were like uh, some decades ago mm -hmm. and and i don't think that makes them less legit i just think it's a practical thing of like who got here when and and, and like how how we've dealt with stuff mm -hmm. um so, and then in terms of, um, cause I don't think Mr. Floke is here was asking specifically Eastern versus Oriental, but, um, in, you know, compared to like returning to Rome, that was not something, um, I really thought I could do. There was too much like bad experience when I was younger with certain people and, um, too many things that I just straight up, you know, as I was doing a comparison of history because like i believe that you kind of when you like consciously convert to something or you choose to be part of something you are in a sense responsible for what you're joining so that doesn't mean i'm going to go up to a roman catholic and like be like i'm going to stab you now because of the crusades right but in general when you read about like a lot of the stuff um, there were just things I wasn't comfortable with. And that's not to say that the Byzantines were never violent, um, or, or anything like, like that. But, um, there was just like too much stuff in the Roman church that I would have to like apologize for that I really didn't feel the need to, uh, cause I, I didn't want to be a part of it. And then Protestantism like, was never something I was like, no, like just, just go be an atheist, you know? Uh, um, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I think I accidentally turned off my mic. Okay. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, shoot. That's not. Um, yeah. No, and, no. What if the Blessed Virgin came down and was like, Stefan, hello. 
one of the Protestant sects is true. Figure it out. And then she leaves. Well, <clears throat> I'd probably attribute that to a demon. Um, <laughs> first, then she comes down again and she says, I'm not a demon. Christ is Lord. And then comes back. Leave, I leave. would be like, make the sign of the cross. It, she did that. Yeah. Oh, but Protestants don't usually do that. Some do. I, but... Hey, Anglicans and Lutherans. Anglicans like to sit on this fence of like, are we apostolic? Are we Protestant? You know, we're both. Um, I don't want to get, get into all that, but well, and that's the thing. It, it's funny that a lot of the reasons you went Anglican were reasons mm. I could never, right? Mm. Um, because, um, well, I, I don't want to go off on that trail. I, I think that like, it deserves another episode that we could do. We've got like five episodes in yeah. the work here now. Um, yeah. But, um, so I guess to completely answer this question, I, at what point in my journey, now that's not necessarily the same thing that I was answering. Hmm. Um, hmm. But, you know, once I was attending other services, like I remember telling you, like after, we went, I think it was after we went to, um, was it First Christian Church or something? The Disciples of Christ Church? Yeah, the one like near the square. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I can't do this anymore. I have to go to Eastern Orthodox services. Yeah. That was like, one of like, the last ones that we mm -hmm. went to. I think it was the, we, we might have gone to like, a Roman one a few times with like our friends and, and, and but like yeah, yeah. in terms of church clubbing, it was over like that day. Yeah. I remember that day. And I, I remember you were disappointed, but I was like, I found what, like the truth um, as you know, and so I, I can't go back. So I, I, so I guess to specifically answer your question, Tasho, um, it was like late January of 2012. So, uh. The Mayan, yeah. Okay. My my Mayan ancestors thought the world would end there because mi abuela es de Honduras, pero mi español no es muy bueno. But I do have Mayan ancestry, despite this pasty complexion I have. So what my Mayan ancestors meant was that I would find the one true faith in 2012, or 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 yeah. accept it in 2012 because I found it the year before. But um, yeah. and um. Yeah, and since I mentioned, I did go to your chrismation. You, you did, you, you did. You went, um, and um, a few others. Another, same, as, same as Cheryl. Um, who else was there at that time? Justin Fogg. Daniel. Hmm? No, 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 I mean, like, who was getting chrismated? Cheryl was chrismated at the same time you were, right? No, she was the year after, I think. Oh, okay. She, she was, was there, Daniel. But she wasn't part of my group. Daniel was made a catechumen and then like apostatized a week later. So no, he was he was there, but he wasn't chrismated. Rachel was, but then Rachel, yeah. I I don't want to talk bad about people. I I love all these people. It breaks my heart that that they left. Um, and that these people don't even talk to me anymore. Um, so you know whatever. Um, your sound went out again, dude. This one, so I'm going to switch over to the regular. Okay. Can you hear me now? It's probably a different video. Yeah, I can hear you now. I'm going to turn this one off. All right. It's probably different audio quality now. How is it? Yeah, it's fine. This okay. refined canine, are they are they a papist? Refined canine. Let me see. Wax of counsel. If you take an EO view of councils being based on consensus instead of papal acceptance, you have no way to know whose consensus to follow, the Byzantines or the Coptics. This is actually an argument I make um, for... Oh. Uh, so the, the point I make... <laughs> I agree with Chalcedon. So I don't... Obviously, I don't agree with Chalcedon. I agree with Chalcedon. Mm -hmm. But we cannot have a subsequent ecumenical council until Chalcedon is resolved. Mm. Because it, it can't be ecumenical if it's not ecumenically decided upon. So interesting. We know about 
Rome's got the 21 councils. Eastern Orthodox have the seven. Oriental Orthodox have the three. And then the Assyrians have the two. Yeah. You guys have the four. No one ever yeah. talks about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I considered Anglicanism when I was younger, and I think y'all are cool. I loved the queen, and I commemorated her as my monarch with the BCP prayer until she died. Let she me tell you, my mother, uh -huh. whose house I'm in right now, uh -huh. did Celestine? No, she didn't get to meet my mom. So I met Celestine Hale at, at, at the monastery. Um, and my mom would visit me sometimes, but I couldn't remember if they had if met her, but no, she's never met her. Um, mm. My mother was born February 6th, 1952. Okay. That's when Queen Elizabeth was enthroned. Or, or, oh. or when she took, sorry, she's actually enthroned a few months later, but that's when her dad died. So she became the regnant. The enthroned. So she was like, up until she died, she had been queen my mom's entire life. Oh, wow. So, Melky, you knew that. Uh, I attempted to become Coptic first, but I could not get any parishes or monasteries to answer my inquiry, so I ended up Antiochian. Racism. I actually have a friend Sorry. who was looking at who. I have a friend of mine who's um, I can't remember if he's Lutheran or Anglican, but he was looking into the Coptics. Uh, he lives in the Middle Tennessee area. Um, yeah, Refined I, canine. I'm a papist. I do not accept the last six papal claimants. Thank though. you for saying They're papist. Only, we, we love you for for that. Yeah. Also, um, thank you. The no, only consistent, counts. the closest thing to consistency one can be as a papist is a set of vacantist. I, I will maintain oh, that. Oh, wait. Are, are you with SSPX? Or... No, no. SSPX would not be SETI. Um, right. They, they've they been yeah. cucked now. Now they're like, oh, we do accept him, but they didn't always say yeah. that. Um, yeah. Cuckhead. Sorry. Cuckhead, not cuck. <laughs> well, the like proper use of cuckhead. Yeah, cuckhead. <laughs> Thou hast been cuckhead. Um, but yeah, no, like that's the only one I can maintain if I were a papist. I'd have to be a SETI. Like that, I, it does not make sense any other way. So. Yeah, bring back the Borgias. <laughs> um, I can imagine um, someone logging in and hearing me just say that by itself and being like, whoa. And then I'm like, wow. <laughs> change the channel. Misrepresented forever. Uh, uh, all right, let's see what else. Um, man, we've been going on this for two hours. It's like old times. Um, I I said to someone today I wanted to beat the record of anyone that had been on here before. So have we beaten that? Um, I don't think so. Really? Well, the, we're yeah. I mean, we've got like a four. There's like a four hour one I did. Um, all right. Well, so. we gotta we gotta beat that then. Dude, I gotta I gotta prep for for worship. I've got. Oh, we talked about that earlier. Someone asked a question about that. Um, where is it? Um, here we go, Patrick. Father James, are Anglicans expected to submit to a daily prayer rule? Yes. So it well, yes and no. Um, yes, the priest is supposed to offer prayers daily, uh, twice a day, which is morning prayer and evening prayer, matins and even song. So I do it daily. In fact, after I'm done here, I will be doing even song. I'm not a full time rector uh, right now. I'm part time, so I don't. I, I'm I'm back at in Tennessee and I'll be, I've been moving things slowly to my, my new parish. Uh, so every time I go, it's in South Carolina. Every time I go, I'm bringing new things. Uh, so I'm not there during the week, but I'm here, uh, but on Sunday. Right. Uh, so anyway, yes, you're supposed to have daily prayer offered, whether it is, um, privately or publicly. Uh, so I do it daily morning prayer and evening prayer. Um, there are days that I like, God forgive me, I, I miss. But in general, it is every day, pretty much. Um, in fact, I don't think I've done a day where, in a long time, in where I had no morning or evening prayer. It's a, always been at least one. But that's um, that's similar to the practice that you get from Romanists of doing offering the the mass daily. Um, I offer morning and evening prayer daily, but not but not the mass. Anyway, yeah. I don't know if you had something you wanted to add to that. I mean, there's a question about to you about Anglican priests, so I, I can't answer. Well, if Eastern Orthodox priests are considered doing the same or whatever. I've been told that Western Rite priests are supposed to do the office daily. Um, and I don't know if there's any rule for priests of the Byzantine Rite, but I think... Um, 
like, I mean, all what, so what my most recent confessor out in New England said to me was a Christian should have a rule of prayer. So mm -hmm. I feel like any Eastern Orthodox or Oriental Orthodox Christian is expected to be praying every day. Maybe what that looks like is different. Um, um, no, I don't really want to talk about that. That's very boring to me. <laughs> but because because Melchizedek is a a loyal beloved brother in Christ, I will answer that. Um, I, I will say uh, Melchizedek is a based name. I love yeah, it. and he spells it with a Q. So in my phone, it's like Melchizedek way. That's what it looks like. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I love that guy. Or excuse so, me, I should correct myself. It's a based name. Sorry. So he and I actually talked about this. And that's one of the exceptions I make. I'll, oh. I'll, I'll, I'll spell it with the ED, but say based. Um, but technically it should be like B-A-S-T-E. But he was like, but Orthodox, we are based. I'm like, I don't disagree. You know, it's just. <clears throat> um, so I will tolerate the expression Byzantine Catholic because Byzantine essentially just means Eastern Roman. So Eastern mm -hmm. Roman Catholics, Byzantine Rite Roman Catholics, Byzantine mm -hmm. Unionists, whatever who don't recite the F word, but pray for the Bishop of Rome. What would you like me to talk about? I, I will tell you this. They used to. They used to. Um, plenty of units of various rites still do. Mm -hmm. um, I think in like the... Di uh, some of those Slavic lands, it gets kind of wi wild, but it was either the group that became known as the Ruthenian Uniates or the Ukrainian Uniates. One of them actually said they didn't want to say the Filioque, but they ended up giving in and they might not do it now. But um, in general, with Rome, you know, like we were saying like, like hours ago that Rome has like condemned, they have condemned conciliarism, but the Uniates try to act like they are conciliar. So it's just, I don't think there's much my, else to say about that. My brother is a, a, a Ruthenian union, by the way. Uh, oh, I remember he was looking into being Roman Catholic. Is it, is oh, I, I, yeah. He, he's been Roman for like, oh, since 2017, I want to oh, say. Oh, okay. But then, but, but, yeah. but then he switched rights. Yeah, he switched rights. Okay. Uh, Briefly, he was in the SSPX, actually, because of COVID. Based. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what's funny? You, you know the uh, the name of the founder of SSPX, right? Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, he's French. I can't remember. Archbishop uh, Lefebvre. Le yeah. Lefebvre. Lefebvre, yeah. My grandmother on my dad's side, mi abuela uh -huh. es de Honduras, uh -huh. her last name was Lefebvre. Was she related or? Yes. I asked my dad about this. Um, mm -hmm. We were on the Spanish side. You know, Lefebvre was on the wrong side. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the, the, the French side. Just the French um, side is the wrong side. It's always the wrong but side. But <laughs> Lefebvre is not, Lefebvre is not a French or Spanish name. It's a Bosque name. And so uh, the Bosque had been split between France and Spain. So uh, I am of Bosque ancestry and then Spanish and then Mayan and through all that on, on my dad's mom's mm -hmm. side. Uh, my dad's dad is Swedish. That's why my last name is Johansson. Um, mm -hmm. Yep, my cousin, very very distant, but close. Well, he's Archbishop, by the way. Archbishop, not not Bishop, but yeah. Whatever we, I, I don't even recognize. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, the modernists in the post conciliar church, in the name of ecumenism, reversed the Latinization of the Eastern Catholic churches, and now they're crypto orthos. Yeah, cool, cool story. Yeah. All right, great. That's 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 boring to me. Um, <laughs> No, it's just, um, yeah, aren't, we aren't spell uh, yeah, I think Celestine is Creole specifically, aren't you? Is, is that racist for, for me to ask? Um, I don't know. Anyway, so we need to talk about more about how we got to where we're at. That's like what the thing was. And we asked yeah. all these people asking us all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, so, so I was made a catechumen September 2012, so September 30th, 
2012. Um, and oh, shush, the filioque itself is not boring. I just, I've said everything I need to say. Um, I just like telling people we don't use the F word in church. And that, that, that tells you everything you need to know. Um, uh, and then I was chrismated May 4th, 2013. So, okay. Yeah. I, I knew she was a Creole. I remember that. Um, so, okay. That, that is fighting words. That is very racist. <laughs> <laughs> that triggered me. Trigger. I, I am triggered now. I'm also part English too, though. I'm like Scots, Irish, Welsh. I, I, I actually have no English in me whatsoever. I know that that's hilarious. Um, but um, okay, I'm I'm gonna start ignoring these. I'm just uh, yeah. You don't need to. You don't need to respond to them. I'm just putting okay. them up. Yeah. Oh, okay. I I I see. I see. Uh. But what you know? What's funny. So Pascha that year for, for, for us was May 5th. And this year is the first year since then that it's been that. That's like oh, interesting. That's 11 years later. But I was chrismated on Holy Saturday, according to the Julian Pascalian, which fell yeah. on May 4th that, that year. It's Star Wars Day. As, as a Star Trek guy, you know, it's very ecumenical of, of me. Gay. No, you. <laughs> um, so... And, and you were at that. Now, I didn't uh, – oh, and I, and I mentioned this guy before, Justin Farr, who yeah. is a Roman seminarian. He's a seminarian. I actually met up with him recently. Yeah. Nice. So he was at my chrismation too, and he was in the process of becoming Roman Catholic. Mm -hmm. I didn't make it to either of your confirmations. I think I was out of town mm -hmm. uh, when you were confirmed in the Anglican – church and he was confirmed in the in, in the roman the roman yeah. so it wasn't me intentionally being mean i i just yeah i, I wasn't around yeah um and then i'm trying to remember so i was into like biblical studies i, I used to like worship at the stool uh the footstool of bart ehrman uh um yeah no now now, now i'm not a fan but mm -hmm. um I, because of that, I was graduating college. Like I graduated from college a week after my chrismation. So I had a lot of important decisions to make. And so I mm -hmm. ended up enrolling in the Patriarch Athenagoras Orthodox Institute in Berkeley, California. I started there in, uh, I got out there in late January. I think the semester actually started in February, but of 2014. So that's been 10 years ago now. And I was like, you know, a newly crisp Orthodox guy. Um, and so I went out to Berserkly, you know, to like study more about Orthodoxy and, and do the I'm Orthodox sorry. grad school program. And that was a wild time. And that's when I earned my nickname of Superdox because the yeah. guy, my man Genesis, who made that page, said to me like, dude, you're like Superdox or something. And we, and we had a good laugh. And um, uh. yeah, and then he wanted – you know, to, to make the, the, the page, but, um, I did that for a calendar year. So I earned, I earned a certificate in Orthodox studies. And then that helped pave the way for me to go to St. Vladimir seminary, which I started in 2015. And I was there till 2020. I studied there for five years. I got two master's degrees and then took an extra class, which was actually one of the best ones I took. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, Oh, by the way, I, I'm going to make an announcement. All right. So challenge to everyone watching. If uh -oh. you super chat to the equivalent of a thousand dollars, we'll go on just all through the entire night. We'll do that. We'll make it a, like a 12 hour uh, stream. Or something. All right. I mean, all I had to do was DoorDash in the morning, but you know, I, I, I can always move it around. I'm my own boss right now. My robotic overlord will allow mm. this. Um, so... I was in touch with you while I was in seminary, but I don't remember piece by piece what you were doing. And I, I remember staying with you at least once when I came back to Murfreesboro for seminary. Yeah. So 2015 to 2020 f filled me in a little yeah. bit just to like refresh. And then if anyone, yeah. Yeah. So I was confirmed in 2013 okay. and 
Uh, what month? Uh, October, October, October. Okay, 6th. so by then I was in Birmingham, but I was yeah. going, I was visiting, but yeah, I. You were out of town by that time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't living in Murfreesboro, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think you actually, we talked about it. Um, let me see. Uh, 1,000 from an individual or 1,000 communitively? Um, either way, <laughs> we'll do either. <laughs> um, so, uh, what was I going to say? Um, uh, yeah, so I, you know, I was confirmed in 2013 and then was finishing up college. I finished it in 2016. And, uh, we th then went in 2017, went to seminary, uh, in the Pittsburgh area, just North of Pittsburgh. I, I remember um, you being in, in PA. Okay. Yeah. And then in 2020 during the, uh, the disease which shall not be named, uh, <laughs> I graduated. Okay. And that's when I was in California. So I was in California from 2020 to 2022 and then came here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause your, your old Bishop, uh, Ray Sutton was at the Western Rite conference in 2018. Well, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. 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 And then he's he wonderful. Showed, I love him. He came to St. Vladimir's uh -huh. sometime after that. I can't remember if it was that semester or the following year. But, and and he came to Vlad's with a few other Anglican bishops, um, and um, they were chatting, you know, with Father Chad Hatfield and Father John Parker, who is the dean of yeah. St. Tikon Seminary. Uh, yeah. and, and I briefly met him just saying, oh, I remember you being at the Western Rite Conference uh, mm -hmm. last summer. I, I, I was there, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, so when you said you were part of the REC. I was like, oh, I remember that guy was like at our yeah. conference. Uh, yeah. So um, that's, I think that's, that conference is when I learned what the Reformed Episcopal Church was. I hadn't Very heard based. of it before. Yeah, except you joined the cuckold synod of the ACNA. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. We'll, we'll, have another, we'll have another episode about that. Um, that, that that only well no, no I, I don't want to. Um, so okay yeah so by like the spring of 2020 I'm finishing my last class and I went to live with a priest that uh, you know was a friend of mine at at the time um, mm -hmm. who was with Rocor but had been doing supply work for for the Antiochians. Um, I called them up and I you know because I would visit him up in New England all the time and we had done Western Rite training t together because he mm -hmm. was unofficially attached to the parish where father john edward hughes was in oh lawrence. okay yeah in in lawrence massachusetts and father ed uh was the vicar general for the antiochian western right vicariate up until a year and a half ago and mm -hmm. he also at one point was the head of the department of liturgics for the entire antiochian archdiocese so his parish uh, was always Byzantine, but he had a Western Rite side altar set up. So actually, we, we yeah, so we learned a lot of liturgics, both Western and Eastern, from uh, from Father Hughes. There, um, uh, my phone, my uh, sorry, my computer battery is low. I'm just plugging it in. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, all that to to say, I called that priest up when things were looking bad in New York. And I just said, look, if, um, if things get bad, it may become illegal to walk outside. And I knew he, he had just gotten, uh, in the Byzantine, right. You need what's called the antimension, which is a cloth that has the signature of the Bishop on it in, in, in the West. Uh, I think your equivalent is the altar stone. Mm. Yeah. So he got an antimension from Metropolitan Hilarion of blessed memory. And uh, so I knew he could serve in his home if we needed to. And that's what we did. Like yeah. New York shut down like the day after I left and I went to, and so um, we, uh, you know, we, we were serving in, because I just come from seminary where we had been doing daily services we did some kind of service every day and we would mix it up like sometimes we would do western right um offices 
and uh, things like that, you know, just to like survive while we're all locked down. And we, there were some other parishes that eventually did op- open up and, 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 and ask us to come help, uh, including the church in Lawrence sometimes. But he was in Rochester, New Hampshire at the time. And um, oh, I said I wasn't going to look at him, but now I am. So let's see. Uh, is, the, is that cloth like a stole? No. Thus, the equivalent of the stole in the Byzantine rite is called the epitrachelion. Uh, so a lot of people just say the word stole. They stole it. Do Anglican rites matter? Well, see, when I say all rites matter, I'm not talking about the particular church celebrating the rite. I'm talking about the rite itself. So, um, like, uh, I, I don't know if you saw earlier, I, I, I don't know when this gentleman uh, signed in here, but, you know, uh, in the Antiochian Western Rite Vicariate, we do the Liturgy of St. Tikon, which... Um, is you know very much rooted in the conversation the Russian Church and the Church of England were, were having, which produced the 1928 Book of Common Prayer. That's something a lot of people don't know. Is that was a result in 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 part of of the dialogue that was was going on. So Orthodoxy, typical Imperial Byzantine fashion, we already thought we owned it. So we just thought we would make <clears throat> the improvements you guys didn't make, right? Um, And the English office is blessed for use as well, uh, as well as the diurnal, the the monastic diurnal. So so when I say all rights matter, that's not branch theory ecumenism. That's not me saying anyone that does a liturgy is automatically cool. Like, it's me just saying that that the rights matter, Mm -hmm. uh, if that makes sense. And from your perspective, Anglican is not a right when we're talking about the liturgy of, of the Book of Common Prayer. Yeah, like there's no such thing as an Anglican rite. Yeah, sure. I mean, you, you could say the Anglican usage of the Western yeah. rite. I mean, I, I guess, um, just like there's no such thing as like a, a Russian rite. There's like the Russian yeah. usage of the Byzantine rite. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> uh, Father James, would you ever consider Western rite orthodoxy? Uh, before I, I would consider that before I would ever consider Rome. I'll say that for sure. Like definitely way before Rome. Rome is relatively quite low on my... Um, We're waiting for you. <laughs> We're patiently waiting. Um, for me, it would be this. Uh, Anglican, if not Anglican, Old Catholic. If not Old Catholic, Lutheran. If not Lutheran... Well, Lutheran with valid apostolic succession. If not Lutheran, then some Western Rite orthodoxy. So. Top five ain't bad, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, what's your favorite Anglican hymn? Um, are you asking something that Anglicans would sing, or something like particular to the Anglican tradition? Answer it whatever way you want. Yeah. Okay. Um. In general. So the funny thing is, is I, I always like to say I don't do favorites, but inevitably there is stuff that just hits you differently. Mm-hmm. Oh, come Emmanuel is like probably one of my favorite Western hymns in general. Oh, yeah. um, it's yeah. so like eerie in like the best way possible. And it's um, Advent, yeah. Uh, right. of, I, it's a requirement for Advent for us. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's used you know in the Western Rite Vicariate uh, for for Advent, and it. Um, and it's priest schism, so that's helpful. Um, yeah. And I have to say, it sounds better without an organ. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, and I say this to our own Western Rite churches too. The organ oftentimes sounds like a fart. Where's Shane Darby? Fart, fart. By the way, unblock Shane. Okay, so, but seriously, <laughs> I said... I said that at my last parish, which is Western Rite, and, and like used an organ, and, and I was going off at it. I was like, that hymn is so beautiful, but like the organ made it sound like a fart. And like this, like, these like kids heard me say, and they were laughing. And I was like, oh, whoops, like that's not necessarily like, yeah. you, you don't need like the, 
you know, the, the assistant there, like walking around, like saying that, but, uh -huh. um, yeah. And Wait, then, let, me, let me answer as well. Let me, uh, I forgot to answer right myself. Okay. Um, I like the Trisagion, um, chanting the ones I, I, that I'm aware of. Yeah. I was going to say, because uh, there, there's multiple. Yeah. There are a few. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing though, um, something specific to the Anglican tr tradition, I actually like, because th this, this is like all rights matter, uh, mm -hmm. encompassed. I'm sure as a devout Anglican, you're familiar with, um, John Mason Neal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We use a lot of his tr translations because he, really? yeah, he was all rights matter. Like before, mm -hmm. oh, I mean, and like, like, before I was born, right? Because yeah. he studied a lot of the, you know, the the other six rites of the historic church. So he actually took some hymns from the other traditions and just translated them into English and then metered them for Anglican chant. So one of them nice. is, is known as uh, Receive, O Lord, from Heaven Above. And it was written by St. Ephraim, the Assyrian. So he's taking a hymn from the East Syriac tradition. That's as far East as you can get in, yeah. in terms of liturgics. And he's just like, yeah, I like this. Like, let's use this. And so I love, because I also have a group on Facebook called Bring the East Syrian Rite Back to Orthodoxy, uh, which I, of mm -hmm. course, ha had to make a plug for. Um, and so I love that, like, in the Western Rite, there is an East Syriac hymn. I mean, yes, it follows the Western melody, and things like that because it, it makes sense it's for the, the you know it's it's been adapted to the western right but its origins mm -hmm. are east syriac and so i really like and saying that from the syrian or the assyrian or whatever is like universally renowned like every historic liturgical tradition every apostolic church venerates him so mm -hmm. um i i i like that one and and like there's that tie of like, it's ancient, so it's pre any of these schisms, but it also like was uniquely adapted for the Anglicans. And then as Western Rite Orthodox bringing Anglicans in, we just were like, yeah, that's, that's good. Let's keep that. So. Excuse me. Um, Father James, have you ever said a Sarah Mass? Stefan, have you ever been to Red at One? I have not done a Sarah Mass like pre-Reformation Sarah Mass, no. Um, yes, I, I would love served, to though. I, I, would love I, to. I have served a St. Econ Mass, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm personally, because I remember wh wh when I met Celestine, she asked me about like what what was it? It was the Mozarabic or something. And while those are interesting, um, I I liken them to like when the Byzantines do the Liturgy of Saint James, or Liturgy of Saint Mark, or Liturgy of Saint Peter, mm -hmm. all of which I've attended and I've served at a James and and at a Mark. Uh, within a Byzantine mm. context, and they're great and and they're very fun, I guess you could say, or, or they're very enjoyable. But they are not; they can't be the heartbeat of a parish again because there's a reason they fell out of use. So, and that's why in the Antiochian Western Rite Vicariate, we're we're careful with that. You know, we we take the received tradition. I don't think it would be wrong to bless a Western Rite church to do. Like you know, the Gallican, the Sarum, the Mozarabic on certain days where it ties in with those saints. Um, yeah, so, um, and that's not to put down what she said. It's just like that. That just got me thinking because there's a lot of people on 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 Western Rite Orthodox groups and stuff, and even some people I talk to about the Western Rite who like assume everything we do is all about the archaeology and stuff. And I'm like, no, because archaeology um is not like like liturgy is something that is livid lived if i say livid it's like i'm angry um and so those um those other masses or liturgy or, or d divine liturgies anaphoras hallowings whatever you want to call them um mm -hmm. i think are great to use but um our, our focus in general should be on, uh, you know, the, what is currently 
celebrated and has been in continuous use. Um, but again, I'm totally like if I was at a parish that wanted to do one of those other Western masses, I would totally be down to like, um, if I, at my previous at the, at the Rocor mission in Maine. So, uh, for those who don't know the priest I mentioned that I lived with in quarantine after him, I went to live at our Western Rite monastery in Colorado. After that, I went back to new England. At that point he had started a, a mission church in Maine. Um, and, uh, I served there for a year and a half. So that, that was the same priest that I had lived with in quarantine. He had a blessing at that point to do Western Rite, like officially, but like the parish wasn't like by, by ritual, but it was just like, we could do Western Rite on, on request and, and things like that. He had actually wanted to do a sarum use because he had gone to the monastery in Virginia, St. Demetrios, where there's a priest, Father Aiden Keller, mm. who's a Rokor priest that previously- oh, I know the name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he had previously been Western Rite, mm. and he has a translation of the Sarum usage that he does once a month there at that monastery. And so this priest, I think, had gone to serve it with him, and he wanted us to do it at the parish at some point, but we just never got a around to it. But that's the same church. I, I served the liturgy of St. Mark. We served it twice at the parish and then once in quarantine. So I've, I've served the, the Byzantine Mass of St. Mark three times. So what is um, the Orthodox Book of Common Prayer? Is that the actual title of something? Oh, yes, yes. So, <clears throat> um, uh, no, I, I, I don't have one with me, but um, its fullest title is like uh, the Book of Common Prayer for Orthodox Catholic English parochial yeah. usage or something. So it, 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 it is the project that St. Tikhon and the Russian mm -hmm. Synod told um, us to do, to mm -hmm. go through the BCP and like edit it for Orthodox use. And yeah. so that actually, so I, I have to say, for the monastic diurnal, that's a like a some kind of high church Anglican reprint, but it hasn't been edited for Orthodox use. So you have to have an ordo. Well, if you're smart like me, you know what not to, to, to do in there. But a mm -hmm. lot of people need an ordo to like, oh, mm -hmm. we don't recognize that saint. We can't actually do do that or like what whatever. Um, but the Orthodox BCP has actually been completely vetted of anything we might have an issue with as Eastern Orthodox. Mm -hmm. And so but it's I'll have to look into it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I I've been, I haven't done a side by side comparison and, and maybe again in, in the future you, you and I can, but my understanding yeah. is that, um, it's not terribly dissimilar. Um, yeah, no, in, um, the, like, I love the, um, uh, Oh, what's it called? Wow. The, uh, the Psalter, the, the, oh, who is it? Um, Coverdale Psalter, the Coverdale Psalter. It's amazing uh, in the Book of Common Prayer. It's, it, I love it. Um, Father Michael Wood often brings up and reps the Liturgy of St. John the Divine, the Stow Missal, with Father Michael's editions from the Sam Rite, I think. Do either of you have thoughts, knowledge of that? I don't. I have plenty. Uh, yeah, so um, with all due respect to Father Michael Wood, because he was ordained a priest like like well before I was born, um, his vision of the Western right. I mean, he's part of Rocor and, and Rocor tends to go more with that archeological di direction, which again is not bad. Um, and so I think he might be the only Orthodox priest who currently does that. I'm open to correction on that because I just don't know. Um, Father Michael Wood and I have had some disagreements, I would say on Facebook um, in fact, at one point I did say to him, okay, boomer, <laughs> because I, and like, I meant it in like a friendly jovial way. I, I have nothing personal against him. I, I mean, I've, I've, I've never met him, but he is very big into like not doing like Roman stuff. Like he told me going like this was like Romanism, um, you know, the prayer hands. And there was a discussion on all about Western right orthodoxy, which is pretty much it's technically an open thing, but it's basically run by Antiochian Western Rite. 
people, or at least people of the AWRV mind. Um, mm. And so he was basically, he said, we shouldn't keep, like, the Western Rite shouldn't keep the tabernacle on the altar because pre schism, it, it was kept above it. Um, and the funny thing is, like, in the Byzantine Rite, it's normal to keep it on the altar. And, yeah. and, and, and a lot of us were like, we were just like miffed. Yeah. We were miffed because Rokor, and I, I'm not talking smack. I'm not even making a value judgment on mm. this. I'm, I'm just saying Rokor, what Western right, when they're in doubt about something, will borrow from the Byzantine right. So the fact that Rokor's Western right is a lot more Easternized than the Antiochian one it was a shock to a lot of us that a Rokor Western Rite priest would have a problem with something that mirrors the Byzantine Rite practice, mm -hmm. keeping the tabernacle on the altar, right? Which yeah. wasn't even a Byzantine influence, but it tracks with the Byzantine way of yeah. No, And so it was just a very confusing argument to be a part of. Um, and it was a head scratcher. Um, and, and so that, but then someone else said like, thank God we're not into archeology, span like meaning like the West, the, the, yeah. the, the Antiochians. And yeah, so um, I actually don't personally know a lot about the St. John, the divine um, mass. Um, but, and I wouldn't even, I would be interested in seeing one, mm. but I, I, I personally just, I, I'm cautious about stuff. That's like super archeological because then it could be, I mean, think of it this way with, again, with all due respect to his reverence, he's, he possibly might be the only Orthodox priest serving this. Yeah. Like why? He's well, saying, the, the, so. the archaeological approach is what led to Vatican II type liturgies. Right. Like, and there, I, yeah. yeah. And so, like, I don't want to kick dirt, you know, at, at like my brothers and sisters in Christ, but people have complained to me when they know I'm involved in the Western Rite about things that mirror Vatican II. And it's like always Rokor. It's always Rokor Western Rite. And it's like, how can that be that they're into like pre schism? You know, Antiochian Western Rite, we're, we're a bunch of Anglicans and Latins in disguise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then they're mirroring stuff from Vatican too, which is like, okay. And like some of it's not bad. Like in the, in the Rokor Western Rite, Christ the King is like, is the, I can't remember if it's first Sunday of Advent or the Sunday before Advent. It's the Sunday before Advent. Okay. Yeah. But with the Antiochian Western Rite, it's like in October sometime, uh, yeah. right? So now the thing I just mentioned, I know is Vatican II practice. I, I don't know if I would, like to, I would like to think the Russians did that for the Western Rite and then Vatican II copied it, but I don't know that that's true. Now, it does make a lot of sense because in the Byzantine Rite, we have Sunday of the Last Judgment. Yeah. Which comes... Um, uh, that's this coming Sunday. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Because it's the Sunday before cheese fair, which is like the pre fast fast. It's when in the Byzantine, right? You stop having meat, but you still can have all the cheese and fish and alcohol. Yeah. And you can, it's, it's pretty much like a week long Mardi Gras without the meat. Yeah. And then you go into full Lent after, um, yeah. after forgiveness Sunday. So yeah, the yeah. Sunday, of the last judgment is like the, you know, it's a pre Lenten Sunday. So I think it makes sense in the Western right to like have Christ the King be, be because it, it kind of mirrors the idea, right. Of the last judgment. So um, even though it's not like identical, you know what I mean? But the, the complaint I hear about it from my more quote, quote old calendars friends, it, it, not that it's perfectly the same, but like um, they don't like the feast of Christ the King because it implies that he becomes Christ the King at the end of uh, the age, rather than he's right now Christ the King. I mean, I think it's Christianity is a revelatory religion. So what happened mm -hmm. on Pentecost? The Holy Spirit comes down. Mm -hmm. So was the Holy Spirit hiding the whole time? No. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like 
it's just a, like, yeah. like 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 the fullest revelation that we're gonna get of the Holy Spirit. No, Stephon, you know I mean? this is what the Holy Spirit was doing. The Holy Spirit was proceeding from the Son. That's what He was doing. All right, it's been great, guys. I'm gonna no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right um speaking of which actually i do have to get going because i'm hungry and tired and uh no one donated a thousand dollars come on no one donated nope nope we didn't even uh, get here's the, like, you know we got five we bucks so. okay. um uh, right, book of common prayer then subtitled the administration of the sacraments and other rites and ceremonies of the church in the english parochial tradition according to orthodox catholic okay. usage so orthodox that's actually very catholic similar to the full name of the uh, book of common prayer for us it's uh let me see the the book of common prayer and administration of the sacraments and other rites and ceremonies of the church according to the use of the protestant episcopal church in the united states of america together with the psalter of psalms or psalms of david nice <laughs> uh, so wh where, where all right any uh go ahead um, I was just say, where, where are you living right now? Like, like I know you're in Middle Tennessee, but where specifically? In the borough, in the borough. Oh, you're in Murfreesboro, but but your parish is yeah. Franklin. In South Carolina. Oh wait, so are you moving to South Carolina? Yeah, I'm moving to South Carolina. Yeah. That's what that. Okay, that 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 me message makes more sense now. Okay, so you're not gonna be in Tennessee much longer. No, no, no. Probably by the end of the month, I'll be gone. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, because I um, I'll be traveling through the south at some point in the next few months or yeah. whatever. Well, my plan is to uh, my plan is to visit uh, the borough once a month uh, because I've got like a lot of my closest friends live here, so I'm looking right. at uh, visiting and just hanging out with them, kind of like on a Friday or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so anything you want to say before we uh, cut off the live stream? Oh, plenty. I feel like we didn't get to talk about everything. We got, we, we got to do yeah. a part well, two. Well, we can do another one. Yeah, we'll do we part should, two. We should, we should do this weekly. That's what the world needs. So I want people to know how long we waited for this because two and a half years ago or something, we were going to do yeah. this. And this was when yeah. I had just finished my internship at the Western Rite Monastery but I wasn't out in New England yet. I was like in between because yeah. I had sinus surgery and stuff. Yeah. But I did say, I said, if a church service comes up that I'm going to serve at, I'm going to have to cancel on you. And I think a few days before, I'm like, oh, there's Vespers for the Feast uh -huh. of St. Saint, Saint Matthew. And yep. I guess you were like playfully right. mad. But like after that, it was like there were no more offers yeah. to come on the show. But then I went out, you know, to Maine. And I, and I was, you know, I was working at, at the church there. And so and then I was in Massachusetts for a few months. So um this was actually now like the perfect time to do this while i'm kind of um figuring things out um yeah you know what i mean like i'm obviously still active in church but i'm not formally yeah. at uh with a particular uh, parish or whatever yeah yeah and i'm doing doordash as a secular hustle and just trying to figure out where i want to go next i have offers in a few places but the problem is is like you know um, there's a lot of people who want me at their parish, which is flattering, but they don't, they don't have the means to like pay me a real salary. Yeah. And so it's like, I'd have to get my own place. I'd have to still work a secular job. And it's like, all right, well I can do that anywhere. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I was grateful that the two parishes I have formerly worked at had living arrangements for me. Um, and I got stipends from them, but it's still mm -hmm. like, if I was going to stay at either of them forever, like there's no way I would have been able to like get married and start a family. Um, yeah. and, um, you know, and, and I, who knows, like maybe I'm not even supposed to, to do that, but, mm -hmm. uh, so where I'm at now is like, it's kind of like a, a um, you know, just contemplating and praying and figuring out like the next step uh, and still dealing with um, you know, like baggage that just comes from being around humans, you know, um, cause what a lot of people don't know about the parish in Maine 
uh, and, and I'm not, I'm not airing dirty laundry. I'm not like revealing any secrets here. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm saying as like a, as like a full, like full spread, just like anything anyone may have said on the internet or what, whatever may be abounding in the orthosphere about, uh, what went, went on there is I was the only person at that parish who was like committed full time there. And that's not to say anything bad about their priest. He had kids to feed. So he worked a secular job, um, mostly from home. You know, it was like re remote. So we were able mm -hmm. to do like d daily services there, which was great. And so, and oftentimes I would just do them as like, you know, what, what we call reader services yeah. um, with, with him either there or on, on the property. Or sometimes he would go off and do something and I would just do, do yeah. the service. Um, and so people used to tell me that like, if I left, that, that the parish would fall apart. And two weeks after I left, services were no longer. And we're not going to get mm -hmm. into why. If you know, you know. If you don't, well, um, you know, there, there's other ways you can find out. But so it, 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 was, it was a sad situation, but it was kind of like, wow. Like, okay. And then the, the, the mission, the, the antimension was officially recalled in December. I think because the bishop just realized it, it wasn't gonna, mm. uh, it, you know, it couldn't continue. And so that's not a good feeling to have that a parish I worked so hard at and really put my heart and soul into um, and, and help start, right? Like we were in quarantine, yeah. we were serving, we like helped, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I helped establish it. I mean, I wasn't there when it was formally put on the charter mm -hmm. Cause I was at the monastery, but mm -hmm. I helped pave the way for it. Um, and that's acknowledged by, I mean, like anyone that knows anything ab about it, mm -hmm. that's not me like, you know, Oh yeah. yeah. I'm like, no, it's, it, it's the fact. Um, and the only other person who knows what I'm about to say, uh, is the former rector of, of that church is that I had a schedule on my computer. In fact, I still have it, even though I, I don't update it anymore that went a year out. So I was like looking f into the future with this mission parish. Cause that's how much like I believed in what was going on. And, mm -hmm. um, even after it was decided I wouldn't be there anymore cause of, you know, just things that were going on. And, and I, I think it's okay to say without, um, talking smack or gossiping that there was, disagreements between me and the priest about how things should, should be run. Um, I still was making that calendar in case we came to a resolution in case things changed. Yeah. Even after I stepped down, I had intended mm -hmm. to go because I was going to be in Massachusetts, right? Yeah. I had intended to scoot back up there from time to time and do services mm -hmm. with, you know, like just like old times because I, I was keeping, I mean, it was still a canonical parish and I, I had yeah. no, um, any personal issue I had, you know, I was putting aside. And so it's, um, you know, there, there's a lot of things online that you see about like, uh, that like talk about how like pastors and priests, like how much you guys go through and that's good. And, and I'm glad the information's out there, but a lot less is spoken about, about like people like me who are seminary graduates who go out to these parishes who like drop everything for these mm -hmm. parishes um, who can't provide what we need a lot of the time. Um, yeah. and what we go through, cause we, we become go-betweens, you know, for the people and the priest, if there's an, there's an issue. And, you know, as someone who was a seminary grad and then eventually a tonsured reader, I'm in that weird position where like, I am a clergyman, I am a cleric, but I'm not what's called major order, which would be deacon or a priest. So yeah. my authority is limited. But it's enough where like people will come to me for counseling and yeah. and and help for things, and so I'm. But I'm I'm just caught in this weird, in in between, and so there's not, I I don't really think there's a good support system, whether online or elsewhere, mm -hmm. for whatever you want to call them, pa pastoral assistance, yeah. and in the Eastern Orthodox Church, obviously, like we we can't get married um yeah, after we're, we're, we're married. 
yeah, like once we're a priest, you're you're staying where you are. Traditionally, reader was the only rank that could get ordained, and that goes back to the apostolic canons. But mm. there are other canons that are later that allow subdeacon and deacon as long as it's arranged beforehand. So yeah. But I'm content being a reader. I don't. I'm not in any rush to ascend any higher, especially after my experience thus far. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I think there's a lot of people who like, you know, there are people from the parish in Maine. I was like probably too close with that don't talk to me any, anymore. Like some have effectively ghosted me, um, not responding to like anything. And, and, and I've been told by those in spiritual charges me, well, you know, I don't want to annoy them and, yeah. and keep trying to talk to me if they clearly don't want to talk to me. But some of these people, I would rather them just like give me a middle finger or something like yeah. tell me that you hate me. And, I'm similar. Yeah. Right. 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 And, and again, no, no details because you know, then yeah. if any of them happen to be watching, they'd be like, Oh, you're talking about me. It's, it's like, there's a full range of things here. Some people I can kind of guess why they don't talk to me, but I would still love to talk it out with them. Some, I yeah. actually have no clue. Some yeah. seemed to prefer me to the priest when there was like issues, but they dropped mm -hmm. me and they're still in touch with the, the, the priest. You know what I mean? Interesting. Um, yeah. And, and it's sad. Cause like, um, uh, this, well, whatever it, it, you know, if I, if I regret saying this, I'll ask for forgiveness later, but, uh, the, the priest of that mission and I are, are, are no longer friends. Um, yeah. and that is really sad cause he, I, I considered him one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to get in, into reasons why, but, um, like, li like why we're not, but mm -hmm. you know, it's just, this is not, it, it, it's like, I think about my time there and it's like, wow, like I lost, like I, I gained all these people that like enriched my life. And then like, I lost most of them. Yeah. Um, and so I've been dealing with it. I mean, I think about that all the time and that's mm. very hard. And like my mom can, can tell that obviously I'm down about stuff and, yeah. and I don't post a lot like, Oh yeah, you're, you're on messenger, but you're not on Facebook. Right. So yeah. I've, I've tried really hard not to like post about this stuff, but like yeah. the two feasts of St. Polycarp, which is who the church was named for, uh, yeah. they came up. Uh, um, I did it on the on the new calendar days because I'm, I'm I'm back on on the new calendar, but yeah. January 26th is when he celebrated in 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 the Western Rite, and I was at the Western Rite monastery actually uh, when that fell this year, and I posted about it, and then I got to serve it again um, at um at an at an OCA church, which is um you know like Russian style Eastern Rite, yeah. uh, on February. 23rd so i shared reflections on both the, those days and i acknowledge that there were people who hurt me but i was trying to also say like you know i can never regret going out there and and the things i learned and stuff but yeah i mean you you remember that that that, that old stuff on that was on the left still was someone who um was like only like selectively social right i kind of yeah. like yeah i i mean i was kind of a recluse i still sort of am now i i was probably very like misanthropic yeah maybe not as much when you met me because i i was coming more into like a christian ethos yeah. but certainly the stefan that lived in new york who played in those bands like i hated human beings and so i am like vulnerability is something i've like you know resisted a lot and i made yeah. myself very vulnerable and again maybe too vulnerable yeah. to a lot of these people up there who ended up just hurting me and yeah you know i would at least like love a um at least like we no longer want to speak to you here's why yeah. that's better than just straight up ghosting uh and yeah. i don't understand like why people think that ghost a solution yeah why that's a solution to anything yeah. and i i expect to be hurt b by the world but the funny thing is my some of my like anti-christian friends even are like more supportive of what i do sometimes than yeah. like other orthodox people you know and that's just a weird mystery um it's a mystery <laughs> yeah yeah right I mean, that's the orthodox thing um yeah. 
No, so, but uh, I'll, I'll say, um, it, and we share that uh, similarly. Um, last year was the, uh, without question, the worst year of my life um, on two different accounts. And uh, both pains came from within the church. And it's just, you've, you've got to do what you've got to do, you know? It's, uh, right. And, yeah. and the thing is, is like, I knew I was going to my next uh, parish, which is St. Stephen's in Ludlow, Massachusetts, uh, which is the Western right one. Um, and I got there in November and I was only supposed to stay a month. Mm -hmm. And within the first week, the parish council unanimously um, voted to keep me there through yeah. de December, which was great because then I got to be there for Advent. And mm -hmm. then I left like literally uh, New Year's Eve, like, like after the Sunday mass. Mm -hmm. um, and I was supposed to come back for great Lent. And um after I got back to Colorado, I was told that the parish council, um, they didn't feel the need to have a, a live-in assistant at the church anymore. And I kind of saw it coming because I knew me wanting to stay warm was costing them, them money. Um, and so um, I have to go back out to, to New England at some point because I still have things I left in Massachusetts and even some yeah. things I left in Maine. Um, mm -hmm. So I am going to do one last road trip to New England and I'd like to reconcile with some people, but you know what? Maybe I just need to slay the last of my enemies, you know, like in Deuteronomy, you know, when, when I sharpen my flashing sword. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a Protestant, so I don't have these, these verses memorized, but you know, <laughs> something, something take vengeance upon mine enemies. Yeah. Uh, um, and, um, but, and, 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 and I want to be clear, like, I, I have nothing bad to say about St. Stephen's Parish. I, I'm, I'm still, as far as I know, on, on, on good terms with everyone there. Um, but I think them, like, dropping me really kind of real, made me realize I wasn't fully uh, healed from what happened in Maine. Um, and then I'm here in Salida, Colorado, which for those who don't know is fairly isolated. We're like the Western right Antiochian monastery is about an hour and 45 from here. That's the closest canonically Orthodox anything. Mm -hmm. And then the parishes are like two hours away. Yeah. Um, however, in Buena Vista in this same County, a half hour away, we have that schismatic monastery from Archbishop Gregory, or I call him Farce Bishop Gregory, uh, who, who like still like makes icons for some of our, our churches and- Oh, interesting. Yeah, in his epistle book, the uh, at St. Polycarp's in Maine, when I got there, they had just ordered his epistle book. And that was the epistle book we used the entire time I was there. Um, interesting. Yeah, and so it's funny that he's right there in Buena Vista. I, I, I could probably go and visit, but I don't want to. Um, so, and he grew up Antiochian, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and then he joined a schismatic group, and then he started a schismatic group, which then he broke away from. It was, it's, it's complicated. Yeah. But yeah, he it's like genuine Orthodox Church of America or something. Uh, so it's one of those old calendarists the things that we mentioned before. Yeah. So, um, so I noticed we're getting a lot less text, probably because now now I'm being a downer. <laughs> but I I think on a very serious note, people need to understand that. Um, you know, we give a lot of ourselves. And the thing is, is like at, at St. Polycarp in Maine, it was very like empowering almost to know I was sacrificing things, hopefully not in a prideful way, but that, you know, I was willing to like live in like a subpar trailer uh, for the sake of the gospel, right? And as hard as it was up yeah. there, the emotional hardship was actually like after the fact. And it got really hard you know, like this past few few months when I realized yeah. I wasn't going back to St. Stephen's. Um, and um, uh, Farce Bishop Gregory is Eastern. He he does um, he does the Byzantine right. That's what my friend C Celestine was asking me. Um, and, you know, being, and I, and I don't know because, you know, in your, 
j- jurisdiction or your uh, tradition, you're allowed, like you're a priest and you're still allowed to marry and you could become a bishop and still get married after that, right? Yeah, so I wonder if our experiences, like even though like the rules are different, if there's a similarity here about single unmarried men in ministry who potentially desire to marry, the weird things we get ourselves caught in because like it's almost like we're expected to make ourselves vulnerable but not be too vulnerable don't get too attached don't get too close um people are like i mean i've i i think i could say like i've been misled uh in in the in the in the past and maybe even recently um in, in situations where like i thought there was a potential for something and it ends up that there wasn't, and it makes it awkward either with the girl herself or with her family, you know, depending on yeah. the context. Um, for for me, like, my rule is when it comes to dating, I don't date within my own parish. So that's yeah, a, a, an expression that my my godfather, if you if you remember him, uh, he's now a deacon. He's Deacon John. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. He yeah. he told me a while ago, don't fish off the company pier. Um, yeah. And I've even talked to other people from seminary about how they feel about this. And there is a technicality where like, once you're no longer in the position, it's like safer. Cause if you ask somebody out or you express interest and you're in a position of authority over them, they might not feel like they can say no, or if they do, it'll like be awkward for them. So even if they can say yeah. no, they look at you differently. And like, that's kind of unfair, but like, I get it. Um, but then we're also told like, of course you can and should find somebody and you need to be more outgoing. And I'm like, what? Yeah. It's just, there's all these yeah. contradictory things. And I even get people, you know, within the Orthodox world, like I'm known for traveling and people tell me, have you considered being stable, settling down? And I'll say, you know, when I try that, it doesn't work out. And they're like, well, pick better places. I'm like, Oh shit. Why didn't I think of that? Like, <clears throat> you know, like duh, of course, like I, I don't, and that's why, like, I very much, like, I mean, the, you know, my mom is, like, one of the only few people I can trust at this point. You know what I mean? And she's not yeah. even orthodox, you know? Um, well, you can trust me. I'll say that. I hope I've proven myself <laughs> trustworthy. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Like, when I say things like that, I'm about, like, canceling out other people yeah, that yeah. are actually tr- trustworthy. But, I mean, you're you're not really in a position where you could hurt me in that way. Yeah. Um, thankfully. Ugh. <laughs> um <laughs> No, but like, you know, despite everything you and I have been through and like the differences of opinion and some of the really heated stuff we used to get into, like, yeah, like it, it actually is, since you brought it up, it's good to know that I can count on you. I can call you up and talk to you about something if I need to, uh, like, I know that you've got my back and, and like, I hope you feel mm-hmm. the same way for, for me, yeah. even, even if we go months without actually talking. So there's a yeah. difference between people who just don't talk very often and like actually ghosting somebody. Yeah. Because there's plenty of people who I don't even – I'm not very quick to respond to all the time, but I'm not ghosting yeah. them. Or, or people yeah. who don't respond to me very much, but I know if I'm rolling through their a- area, they'll take me out to eat. They'll spend the day yeah. with me. That's not – you know, a natural yeah. like dissolution of talking is not yeah. what ghosting is. Like Ghosting is like a deliberate ignoring of the person, cutting ties, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and – I, I was reading online actually that uh, a lot of psychologists, like not to get all secular, but like they consider ghosting a form of like cruelty and abuse. Yeah. It's not technically illegal, but yeah. it, it, it is considered. And there are, um, there's at least one case of someone who ghosted me that I actually think it was, you know, it was abusive, but um, I didn't mm-hmm. give in to like what, what, what they wanted. So, yeah. but it's, it's, it's still hard because it's like, when I think back to these people, I'm like, they seem like they really cared about me. They seem like they want to be my friend, yeah. but certain conditions change. You tell them something they weren't ready to hear. You express a feeling they don't share and then like everything changes. And that's really unfortunate. So, um, I mean, I guess since I went on that little sob fest, do you, in your pastoral experience, have something to take away from that? Or, or advice or someone who went through something similar, what, what, because I think this will apply to any group or denomination, like anyone that's in some kind of pastoral ministry where there is kind of this double standard on us to be vulnerable, mm-hmm. but not too vulnerable, et cetera. How do we well, get through that? Yeah. Um, 
I, I've had, I think, maybe somewhat similar sort of situations happen to me because, uh, you know, one thing that happens is, well, I'm the not married guy, you mm -hmm. know, as the priest. So, you know, that means um, I'm, I have so much more free time, right? And so, you know, you can get me for half the price at twice the labor, you know, <laughs> basically. <Right>. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I have to guard against that, right? Um, you know, uh, and this has never been a problem for me, but like the whole, like, dating within the the church like that that's just something i will never do i will never date within a, a the local parish especially especially if i'm the rector if i'm the rector or a priest there uh, anything of authority there's just that I, I won't touch that um and i never have never will um the uh the the sort of hurt that happens within a parish i've definitely dealt with that um mm -hmm. it's been problems um the uh <sighs> It hurts because these are supposed to be people who love you like brother, like like you're a brother in Christ because you are, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but they uh, but they care about money or they care about whatever, you know, more than than um, they care about my soul, you know. So that always hurts. But I I just I I'm convinced of the truth of Christianity and convinced of the truth within the sect that. I find myself and so i say well you know if that hurts people are jerks and um they're going to have to answer to god for how they treated me and move on from there yeah <laughs> you know you know and it's <clears throat> when when you sign up to to wear the black robe or or wear the white yeah. collar you know you know you're in like you you will suffer right i mean i yeah. like duh, i knew that um <clears throat> but um I guess it's like you know at this it, it's it's like people that I was really close to who used to have me over their house and like yeah. people like I, I I shared you know like thoughts and with that like I, I don't necessarily like tell tell everybody it's just like what I, I I was asking God why did you even introduce me to, to some yeah. people when literally I'm left with nothing from them now just a world of hurt and ignored yeah. messages or 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 half ass responses to like like yeah. it, it, it's like it's clear they don't really want to talk to me even though yeah. they, 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 they might give a technical response but there's no like actual yeah. follow-up um yeah. that sort of stuff is just really because because it's crippling it's like what if i see these people in real life oh were they going to yell at me are they going to ignore me are they going to pretend like we're we're okay uh you know so yeah that that's just been I mean, that that yeah. speaks more about them. Uh, I would say it, it probably might be more of their guilty conscience. It better so, be. No, I'm just um, uh, oh, I don't know how much I should give about this. Uh, no, I, I might tell you about that story later. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you and I. Yeah. Well, yeah. The the world does not need to, to know, but we'll we'll chat privately. Um, oh, I just realized. Yeah, we'll, chat, we'll chat sometime about it. Joachim what? Justin Morgan, I know him. I, I didn't realize, I, I didn't recognize your face on on here. Yes, I know him. As soon as he told me where where he was from, I was like, oh yeah, um, yeah. sweet, thanks, pal. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I I have a guy I stay with in Cincinnati that actually was um, a friend, uh, someone that my dad mentored before he went to medical school. But it, it, it's mm -hmm. always good to, to have more people to stay with. The more the merrier there's people in colorado that like i cycle through when i'm yeah traveling for church so um and i'm glad that celestine hale says i enrich her life so that's good see and like she's someone like you know we'll go a long time without chatting and then one of us will text and it's just like you know like yeah. that's a different thing than someone you were like really really close with and yeah. then you know nothing ignoring your texts and all that sort of stuff yeah yeah no it's yeah. uh it's sad um and i'll i might tell you about that other story too because uh, like i said two major tragedies happened last yeah. year and uh well and it's not christian you know. like if someone is dangerous yeah. to you then that's understand if someone threatens you or, yeah. or something but yeah like there's no reason to ghost people and so mm. um i yeah a anyway um, it's often their guilty conscience of how they treated you and they're not willing to 
uh, actually face up to their own sins. Um, and I, again, I don't know your situation, so, but yeah. Right. And again, like, I mean, maybe if you and I talk, like I'll, I'll give you more specific detail, yeah. but like, you know, that I don't think this is the place for, for that. It, it, it's just, yeah. I, I do just really want people out there to know that like the people like us that are been to seminary and that, and that serve at parishes, like, um, we are not robots. We actually have hearts. Yeah, we do. We, we, we have feelings and emotions, um, yeah. and sometimes a lot of them. And we're expected yeah. to be there for everybody. And then, you know, if people say they're there for us, and then we, it gets to be too much. It's like, oh, okay, ew, no, no, no. That's that, that's not what I'm signing up for. So, um, and yeah, and like going forward, it's made me like I I'm very committed to being in the church and serving in, in, in the church. So it, it, ha it hasn't made me want to like leave, leave. that, yeah. but it has made me consider that maybe pastoral ministry is like not what I'm meant to, to, to do, at least not right now. Like if I was already married, yeah. Yeah. some of these wouldn't be an issue. I'll put it that way. Um, yeah. Not, not all. I mean, I mean, there are some things that might've happened anyway, but some mm. of this, you know, and, and there are even parishes we have Eastern Orthodox, parishes out there that like would prefer to hire somebody who's already married mm -hmm. probably to avoid some of these things. Um, so, and that's understandable. Um, I think people, you know, if, if I was wanting to pay somebody, I'd be much more probably willing to fork out a lot of money for somebody who is, um, so there's a gnat in here. Um, for someone who's like married and it's like, okay, you're stable. Like, you know, I mean, me, I'm kind of like a loose cannon, you know, I get that. So I, um, the, 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 the problems of being a single man and a priest, uh, for me are more just people think that they can take advantage of me because, right. uh, and they can treat me as less than human, uh, because I, uh, it, you know, when they hurt me, they're only hurting me and they're not hurting a family, you know? So oh, right. they, they feel yeah. like they... Yeah, yeah. It's that's like that's the issue I come across. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like a similar thing has occurred with with me um, in that regard as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. So. Um, well, anyway, well, now that we've had our our um, sop fest. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, our, our little heart to heart. <laughs> End on that serious note. Heart, yeah. um, little Dr. I Phil do, session. Right. Yeah. But all, yeah. Not only is ghosting not Christian, but blocking is not Christian. So I would like to kindly request that you unblock Shane. <laughs> <laughs> so I will repeat again. <laughs> Shane needs to do two things. All right. <laughs> he needs to personally apologize to me, even if it's through text, right? He has my phone. He's he's got my phone number. He lives in the same town that I live in. Okay, literally. so you didn't block you know? his number. It's just, it's just you just blocked him on social. No, media. I didn't block it. I didn't block. He's he talks to me on Instagram. He sends me things on Instagram. Oh, he's not blocked on Instagram. Oh, fart. <laughs> I blocked him on Facebook, and I don't even have Facebook anymore. <laughs> so right, o only on Messenger. They can still find you. Yeah. To send you a message that says unblock Shane. Yeah. So um, he needs to apologize to me for constantly annoying me on, on social media because um, I asked him to stop and he didn't stop. And I, I told him, I kept telling him I would block him it, like a year long of this, mm -hmm. right? And so finally I'm like, okay, I'm just going to block you. So I blocked him. Um, and just a promise that he won't keep annoy purposefully annoying me anymore. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so you told him I'm going to, to block you. Yes. Okay. We'll see. Yeah. That's slightly different then. <laughs> because ghosting is when you don't tell someone. You're just like, Bruh. yeah. So, but anyway, I told Shane that I would uh, plea plea for him. I am I'm interceding on, on his behalf. We don't believe but, in that here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, and I'm also trying to get I'm also trying to get this to hit hit the four hour mark. But um, it's not going to get there. But <laughs> wait, if you log off, am I still on? Like how? Yeah, but I'm not letting you on here unsupervised. All right. Well, what I, what, what, what I want to know going forward, because I, I hope you'll have me back. 
what kind of topics yeah. do they want us to talk about. So I, I, I just want to say again, I have two master's degrees from St. Vladimir's Orthodox Theological Seminary, and I have a certificate of Orthodox studies from the Patriarch Athena Gorus Orthodox Institute, uh, which is part of the Graduate Theological Union of Berkeley, California. My specialization yeah. of, of stuff, if I, or my expertise, is in, is in liturgics, because hashtag all rights matter. Um, yeah. And if you want to, I don't know, like, there was an Anglican who studied at Vlad's while I was there. Did you know um, Ray yeah. Davison? He's, he's a priest now. In, yeah. Um, okay. He actually brought up some interesting things I think we should talk about. In fact, you should try to get, get him on, on, on the I show. I might, yeah. Well, let me let me first say hi to these new people. So, Alan Rule is my one of my favorite filthy papists. Yeah, I, um, I've seen him on, on yeah. your thing. Yeah, and then Christian awesome. Mario, I remember him from Luigi's thing. Yeah, oh, we got to keep Christian going Mario. for for them now. We're, yeah. we're, well, if they if they send super chats, I'll consider it. But like, yeah, I'm guys, starving. Send money. He needs he needs to buy a fifth <laughs> mansion. Yes. Uh, you no, you're, you're the filthiest of filthy. The best hey. papist is a filthy papist. Yeah. How about this? <laughs> Has anyone ever paused to go to the bathroom on your show? Um, I think so. Why? I want to be the first. So I was going to say, oh. quickly grab a snack. I'll go to the bathroom and then we'll reconvene in like a minute. I, I don't have snacks. I've got to go like, like go shopping because I've been traveling. So I don't really have refrigerated food much. Oh, wait, but you're, you're in great Lent, right? Yeah. So just don't eat today. <laughs> I didn't eat that's at all very, today. That's very Western, right? Part of my Lenten practice is actually one meal a day. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the traditional Western. But I've not even had one yet, is my point. <laughs> mm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd love to know what people want us to talk about. I mean, I've got ideas. So if they don't, I, I've got stuff I'll send you later. Um, yeah. I think... I think... Like, I was actually... I was considering doing a, a chill stream where I play like video games and we talk theology. So oh, like right now, not now, but like one day, take me shopping with you shopping. Like, no, <laughs> like you said, you have to go I'm shopping. carrying my computer with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's an audio book on YouTube called the fall of Orthodox England. The channel is called Orthodox audio labs. I'd love to hear more about the developments theologically of the Church of England. Well, and just to remember, remind everyone the distinction, Church of England is not the entire Anglican Communion. It is a province. It is, it's like, it would be like talking about Rokor as if that were the entirety of the Orthodox, basically, you know? Or even just the Russian Orthodox tradition. Or yeah, even just like, right. that's actually a better example, like <laughs> saying the Greek Orthodox, not even like all of the, um, like, archbishoprics under it like the antiochians under it and all that sort of stuff just the greek orthodox right mm -hmm. like in the country itself um so like that's just not how it works uh, hey justin so, yeah. i rec i recognize your face now did you change your face from the other texts or do you have two accounts because yeah this other one looks more like the uh yeah it looks different yeah but then i said like i didn't realize who he was at first until he said the thing about where he's from uh, the Arsenite Schism? I don't know the Arsenite Schism. What's that? I don't so, know. So, I'll put forth, put forth some things that, like, we can talk about another time, but not yeah. now. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, his wife made fun of him for his other picture. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, Ray Davison used to get really upset in seminary because a lot of us felt a closer kinship to the Oriental Orthodox. But he's like, we recognize all seven councils. Like, they're heretics. And I'm like, you know what? I could see from, a, from his perspective why that could be frustrating. So mm -hmm. I might be interested in, like, going down that avenue as to why even some of the more vitriolic Eastern Orthodox who do think the Orientals are heretics, why they still would acknowledge that, like, they're closer to us than you guys are, even though theoretically we share more history of yeah. union in common. Um, yeah. And um, the other thing I asked Ray one time, if he accepts all the ecumenical councils, um, why you guys allow marriage after um, priestly ordination, because the ecumenical- It's a discipline. It's not a dogmatic position. That's why. 
Oh, okay. We'll just go go ahead and answer it now. Why? Why not? <laughs> it's, it's a simple answer. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Arsenite Schism is a 13th century schism in the Patriarchate of Constantinople. There were three claimants to the Patriarchal See. It was happening during the Council of Leons. Um, That's boring. I'll say I, this. I well, I'll say this as a response. This, and and this is I, I you know I call him a, a papist, a filthy papist, but like I love him. He's one of my favorites. Um, so understand that. Uh, what happens oftentimes in Roman critiques of like Eastern or Anglican understanding of, understandings of the, the church is that whether consciously or not, they'll apply their own mindset onto the, uh, the like to the other ecclesiastical position, right? And not that Alan is doing this necessarily, but wh why am I looking at your stomach? Oh. Um, <laughs> I was putting my computer down so I could reach something. So I've got like my snacks and a bunch of other yeah. things in front of me here. And so like I'm in my, I'm in a bed right now. Yeah. So but, living my best So, life. So like three claimants to the patriarchal see, I would say is not nearly so big a problem as it would be for like the West with the Bishop of Rome. As That's it's true. understood. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't know. Okay. I don't think it would even be a problem. Like we, we've never really had that with the Archbishop of Canterbury, you know, but like if that were like something that happened with the Archbishop of Canterbury, it would never be a problem for us at all. So, where is Nicaea three? What does that even mean? Oh, oh, the other Paul. We'll get to him in a second. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. No. No. Um. I. Yeah. Just to clarify, Alan, I didn't. I'm not saying that you were necessarily doing that. I just saw that parallel, and I'm. I was bringing up that yeah. point. Well, um, not it, that you're doing it. Yeah. It, it, um, it is interesting. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. This, oh, yeah. this next year. Uh, the other Paul is uh, a friend of mine. He's a, an Anglican, a fellow Anglican. Uh, he's just trolling. He's a troller. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> he's good. He's a great guy, but he's I mean, just I'll trolling. Tell you this. I will tell you this. And I think this is not a dogmatic statement, but I think it's a true statement. The, the Eastern and the Oriental Orthodox cannot have another ecumenical council without an emperor. Um, emperors convoke at all of the ecumenical councils and plenty of other local ones. Uh, the Oriental Orthodox, I used to troll, especially my dear classmates in seminary who weren't as Oriental friendly as I was. I would tell mm -hmm. them that his Imperial Majesty, Hali Selassie, convoked the last true ecumenical council because he did that in the uh, 1950s or 60s. Um, he got all the heads of the Oriental Orthodox churches at the time to sit and meet. And it was really the first time the Oriental Orthodox had done that mm -hmm. since like even before Chalcedon because they weren't like participating in, in, you know, in the councils and they weren't really fully represented at Chalcedon. Either. Well, so, wait. Do you believe that King Charles the Third is actually a, a crypto Orthodox Eastern uh, secret Eastern Orthodox? Oh, the guy that's like alive now. Yeah. Uh, he has family history with Orthodoxy, doesn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eastern Orthodoxy. Sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, if I say Orthodox, I I'm fine yeah. with it. You can you say whatever you want to say. Okay, I'm yeah, just yeah, always yeah. going to. Yeah, yeah. No, and and I respect the fact that you think that you are. Like I'm. Yeah. Like, like, even if I were to not agree with that, like, if you and I agree on something, then that opinion is orthodox. Not that I'm the of orthodoxy, but like, you know what I mean. So, yeah. <laughs> um, um, I'm not sure. Like, it'd be great if he converted to orthodoxy. To, um, he wouldn't be king anymore, but yeah. Fix England. I mean, I mean, you probably don't disagree with me on that. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Oh, f fix Greece though too. I was that yeah, that was shameful. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Um we have to remember that before Christianity, Greek culture was very degenerate. Yeah. So we have to remember that. And yeah, true. Um and so like they let women hold hands with men when they're not married. Like, come on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um <laughs> I know. What was it? Alexander the Great. What did he say? Like, he was like, he said women were important for procreation, but like true sex could only be had with another man because that was her equal. Yeah. Like, 
Yeah. But you know what? You know what's really messed up? Like that makes a certain level of sense. I don't agree. I'm just saying, like it makes a certain level of sense if you're in that mindset. Because yeah. what people don't what people don't don't realize is paganism was not feminism. Like Christianity elevated women. Pagans saw yeah. women as like lesser men. Like they were missing the pagans saw women the way your modern gay man sees women. Uh, bingo, because <laughs> they were all gay men. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> there is a Greek island called Lesbos. Wait, wait, let me let me let me oh, let me go to, to Zach's first. Yeah. I propose a series like Father Ted, only it's one papist and Anglican and Orthodox priests who somehow end up uh, splitting rent in a house in a weird part of the country. That'd be hilarious. I would love that. Um, Are there any texts that we like, might have missed? A, a few, but like it's... It are surprises so many, so. me that the filioque is boring to you. That was a little while ago. You Patrick, you already responded to that. I did? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Saint, uh, I I, saint Charles, King and Martyr, uh, Orthodox saint. Uh, he's or, he's Orthodox in uh, my understanding. So yeah. <laughs> um, um, there's a Greek island called Lesbos. Guess what went on there in ancient times? Um, sacred liturgy. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, I really do have to get going. I am just starving right now. Come on, guys, um, more more money. More. Oh, here we go. I have so much to say about how happy I am to be a Christian and a woman with all the historical research I've done, how it's informed my egalitarianism. I'm not an egalitarian, but uh, like, I agree that Christianity has elevated women far beyond what paganism ever did. Are you there? Okay. Um, who I'm, is your favorite? Some people are texting me about what's going on here, but they're not contributing to the chat. That's why I'm looking at it. All right, last one. For both of you, who is your favorite emperor from? Who is your favorite emperor from the Komnenos dynasty? I don't know. I, yeah, I I'm. Name one. I'm. I'm aware of this dynasty, but I'm not super familiar enough with all the figures to like pick one. I mean, um, if you ask me in general who my favorite emperors were, I could answer that. But um, what Justinian? I, well, yeah, he was 18 years older than his wife. Based, like, come on. And people shame large age gaps now all the time. And it's like, bro, this is how society's like continued. It literally, and don't get me wrong, I know plenty of great couples that are like similar in age, even some like the woman is older, you know, whatever. It really should just be about the person. But I think in society, we, we like set ourselves up for like infertility. Because look, I'm 34. You're what? You're, you're 37? I'm an age in my 30s. Okay, Doomer. Um, so the point is, is like <laughs> if we if if we don't get married to we're in our forties, if we marry another woman in her forties, like there's a high risk we won't have natural born kids. And I there's nothing wrong with being like if if I get married, I expect to have children. Now things happen; it doesn't always work out that way. Adoption is great, but like generally speaking, there's there's nothing uh, wrong with that. Um, I just want to point that out because, like, it, it's so weird. Like being in the in the Antiochian archdiocese, where there are like there are priests who, in the old country, married their wives when they were sixteen and they were in their thirties, mm -hmm. and then they like wait to move to America so that like no one bats an eye at them. Mm -hmm. But then like that conversation will come up in like another setting, and like people are like really freaked out. Um, yeah, I and I like yeah. Um, Oh, you would have loved it, Alan. You can always go back and watch it and leave comments. Uh, uh, he, he's saying he would have... Wait, is it frozen? Can you hear me? Can you see someone? Yeah, yeah. Can I, you know yeah, I mean, I mean, Yes. <laughs> what, what other... Okay. Yeah, it, it's I mean, getting back to being uh, bad Wi-Fi. Mm. Guys, what, what else What's do you want to know about like, our history together? Like... These other questions are cool and stuff, but like the whole thing is how we got led. How's this? How we'll set up another an one. And how I became Eastern Orthodox, which we did touch upon. But this is so us. Too. How's this? We will set. Yeah, we'll set up another one. In fact, we'll try to set up one for next week. How's that? Great. I mean, I got, you know, I um, yeah, I'm I'm getting a lot of positive feedback. 
Um, <laughs> like this positive feedback. <laughs> that that is hateful. No, you. Uh, Aha. Are you there? Yes, yes, yes. I um. I was born at Mount Sinai Hospital in Roman. Manhattan. Uh, wow. Let me get to it. The whole, um, yeah, my, my dad is Roman Catholic. Um, so that's what I was baptized as at, at a Franciscan parish in Manhattan. But my parents told the priest, we don't know that we want to raise him as a Roman Catholic. And he said, as long as he's some kind of Christian. So that's Vatican II for you. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should say that uh, um, Tiberius is correct here, that uh, in, in Europe, like in England, in Western Europe, in Northern Europe, uh, you ha do have where people marry, you know, men and women marry. And I, the, I think this is just in general with a lot of cultures. It's they're the same age. They're in their late teens, early 20s kind of thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not denying that marrying close in age or or whatever is a modern thing. It, it did happen historically. I'm just saying that this this um, taboo against large age gaps is what's modern. Mm -hmm. That yeah, that that's the only point I'm trying to make. It was lovely to meet you, Father, and I wish you a good fast. It was lovely to virtually meet you too, Celestine. Um, I love your name, by the way. It's a beautiful name. If that's your real name, like your first real name. I think it is. She, um, yeah. She's got like 10 names, you know, because Orthodox Witness Protection pr Program. But, um, um, you know, the right. last Western Rite Conference was held at uh, Miss Hale's Parish. She wasn't able to make it, sadly. It really hurt uh, my, me that well, I was in an area where a good friend was and I couldn't see her. But Let me know when the, last, the next one is because I would love to go to Western Orthodox I'll Conference. announce it right now. St. Paul's in Katy, Texas. Uh, August 6th through 9th. Let me get back to you on the specific dates. I'll send you the info. Oh, close to your birthday. Close to your birthday. Yeah. So last the last time it was right after my birthday. It was within the uh, mm -hmm. assumption octave. But yeah, it usually mm -hmm. is early August. Um, the priest there is Father Adam Roberts, who used to be mm -hmm. a deacon at St. Ignatius in Franklin. Um, mm. I don't know if you ever met him, but. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe talk about how dialogue between Eastern Orthodox and Anglicans ended or weakened. Yeah, that's actually a, a big thing. That, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, was, it was our fault. It was our bad. We 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 sinned. Case, case close. Case closed. Yeah. Um, well, one thing we I will say though, the um, yeah. the specifically um, the. You spelled my name wrong. It's right in front of you. <laughs> uh, all right. I keep saying last question. Or here's your last question. Wait, I was going to address the Anglican dialogue ending thing, but all right. We'll do that in the next video because okay. I've really got to – I'm starving. Ooh, you, are, you are giving me pain. This can, is my can someone send him – can somebody order him some food? Like <laughs> – Go ahead. Do you ahead. use DoorDash? Uh, no, no. Okay. Um, not that I could do anything about it because I'm in Colorado and you're in Tennessee. Um, Can't give me a discount? No. And even like some of my mom's friends around here are like, we should order and you should go pick it up. And I'm like, you can't request your dasher. Like, yeah, yeah. So there's no guarantee I'll be the one who picks up the, the order. Um, who is your fa Who is your fav post-schism Roman Pope? Um... I'll, I'll give the answer. So, um, Oh, well, he said Stefan. Is your name Stefan? I know, but I'm going to give my own answer. Uh, right, so right. for me, uh, I'm Polish. So this is what part of why, like, oh, I love you like John the child molester. Okay. You like the <laughs> JP two. I have, I have a lot of love and respect for JP two. I thought you were going to say uh, Ratzinger. No. Ew. Wasn't he Polish? No, he's German. I can't stand Ratzinger. Um, All this time, the, snark I the snarkier answer is 
Um, I like Francis because he just demonstrates the issues with uh, <laughs> with the papacy. <laughs> Um, I like that he specified Roman Pope, so I can't give a troll answer and say like Pope Shenouda the Third or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like he specifically said Roman Pope. So like now I'm yeah. stuck. Oh wait yeah. a second. By Roman, maybe he means Rome Orthodox, which would be the Greek Orthodox Pope of Alexandria. So <laughs> I currently really like Theodoros the Second, who uh, is the Roman Orthodox Pope of Alexandria. Aha, I evaded it. Yeah. People, I will people say I have forget, a... People forget that the Eastern Orthodox have a contingent and have a Pope of Alexandria as well. And uh -huh. it's funny because the Coptic one and the Eastern Orthodox one have the same name. Mm -hmm. Kawadros and Theodoros. And they're both the second. Like, that's not confusing at all. You know? <laughs> so, um, I will say that I do have some appreciation for uh, Pius X. Because, like, I mean, I disagree with him on so much, but he's actually quite the, like, based Roman pope. Like, you, if you're going to be, so the story that I like best about him is uh, Pius X uh, in, it calls a, a bishop who'd been, like, spreading out some heresies, mm -hmm. called a bishop into his office one day, um, greeted him as a bishop, ripped off his... Uh, Oh, I can't remember what, what some some cloth of his that indicated he was a bishop. I can't remember, uh, his, like his hat or something, and then uh, dismisses him as a father. I was just like, oh, that's awesome. Oh. I don't know if it's true or not, but yeah. Do you, do you know the story of the Anglicans who visited the Roman the Roman Catholic Pope in the Vatican, and they asked him for a blessing, and the blessing he gave them was, "May thou be blessed." in whose honor thou art burned, which is the prayer of the incense. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's based. That's my favorite post um, <laughs> Roman Catholic Vaticanist papalist mm -hmm. pope. Whoever that guy was. I don't care what else he did. That's who I'm picking in terms of for the Roman communion. Also, I promised you, I, I realized, I promised you I would wear the same shirt I was wearing in that photo. So here it is in all its glory. August Burns Red is a Christian nice. hardcore metal band. So I'm not, yeah. you know, it's not like I'm wearing one of my old Marilyn Manson shirts. Um, and then I think, oh, this is backwards right here. Uh, the, the, the name of the band is on the collar too, but my beard might be in the yeah. way. So, um, and also it's getting... This particular room I'm in right now I, I, is not the one I'm sleeping in because it gets cold at night just due to ha how the house is. So I was going to mm -hmm. wait for it to become cold to put it on. But yeah, here yeah. it is. August Burns Red. Um, All right. I am now ending the stream. I've got to go. Um, Say goodbye, Stefan. The, the Stefan read Star Wars Legends books. So I was really into uh, Star Wars Apprentice. <laughs> like, oh, one of the best books from Star Wars Apprentice is they uh, Qui Gon and Obi Wan visit this planet that's shut off from the rest mm -hmm. of the galaxy. And I don't know why. I, I don't remember why exactly. Like, but sorry, I, I don't remember why exactly they went there. But the reason they're cut off is because there's these people that have visions, and the visions mm -hmm. show them these dark things about it. And so, long story short, the stuff that they are claiming about the the, the, the universe is not true at the time. But it is true in the Star Wars movies. For example, that slavery exists on Tatooine. At the time in that universe, it didn't. But it does by the time the, the movies come out. So even though I called myself a Star Trek guy before, I, I do like Star Wars. I just I have a hard time committing to the franchise because they keep remaking everything. You don't know how many do-backs were in that scene. You don't know if Han shot first, which ruined lives. Um, he shot first. Yeah, of course, but in the special edition, he didn't. And and then in the Blu-ray ones, who even knows? And they edit the old actors with the new ones. Yeah. I'm like, and then making stuff out of order. Rogue One comes out. Everyone's like, this is the real episode one. And I'm like, uh, you know. Yeah. So I, I actually, I do like Star Wars. I just, I, I am more of a Star Trek fan because I think 
the 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 genius in being able to create these parallel universes and the time travel makes everything okay like if you watch something and even if it got like erased in the universe it'll never be erased in your heart <laughs> but in star wars they're they're they're, they're like screw your heart yeah we're doing this all <laughs> that's over. disney star wars that's disney star wars and i hate disney star wars all right ending the stream hope you all have a good night no you <laughs>